What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past, the future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today I'm joined by the Revolver Live team. Briar Rabbit, what's going on this week, Maine? Uh, you forgot my official title, Briar Rabbit, as featured in PC Gamer Magazine PC and Gamer uh, Magazine. Forbes. Forbes. Yep, we're we're uh, adding them to the list. The show. We're adding them to the list. <laughs> Forbes, <laughs> Forbes you definitely need to have an after party show. Uh, and I'll make sure I give you my P.O. box, my checking account number. Right. To be fair, I'm surprised you can talk at all with how sore your lips must be after that many dicks that you've sucked. It was Bungie at first. You've now spread onto the entire editorial staff of Forbes and PC Gamer. PC Gamer. I'm shocked. Luckily, shocked. luckily, it was a, it was an even trade, Gary. So to get with the PC Gamer uh, dick sucking, I had to completely abandon the Bungie dick sucking, and in fact, I'm now banned from any bungee dicks whatsoever well to, to, to be totally honest i've watched briar jump from dick to dick for a few years now, <laughs> and uh he's effectively jumped from console dicks to pc dicks in the last year and a half. so i think it's well deserved well, dick second is just better at 60 frames per second yeah objectively yeah. <laughs> objectively just make sure you floss and, and, and use mouthwash i've, yeah. I've heard the the, the far, faster the frames the sweeter the dick but that's just a, a saying that i live my life with. And, and let me just say uh before we get started with the rest of the show bag of dicks.com our amazing sponsor thank you so much for the gratuity my wife wants to know how come she can't enjoy her bag of dicks without hearing the song nonstop. she said are you joking i said no just for the people who watched last week who don't understand what happened, it was a gag played on me by bagadicks.com and Gary Diaz, where they sent me a rigged box of a bag of dicks. So what was supposed to happen is when I pulled out the tab, it was going to sing the bag of dicks jingle nonstop forever. And unfortunately for me, when I found out and I put the battery back in, this is absolutely true. And I gave it to Kate. She listened to it for about eight minutes. And then she... <laughs> She looked at the box and she said, "You, you, you were serious." Eight minutes to look at the box. Yeah, she was doing other stuff, you know, in the in the bedroom. <laughs> and she said, "You were serious? They really sent you one that was had hacked? sex with Beasley twice, and then wait a minute, this seems like it's been going on for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> three times, eight minutes. three times, right? Three times. Just squeeze that third one in. Oh look, man! In my defense, okay, it didn't go on forever. It was set to go on for only three hours, so you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't sit Three there. Three hours is acceptable. Yeah. I'm gonna try to do that <laughs> first thing tomorrow at work in my office. So, uh, Briar, congratulations on being mentioned in PC Gamer and the aforementioned Forbes magazine. Jesus, we do need and to definitely... Time Magazine's um, most attractive uh, top thirty attractive Twitch streamers that are that well, are already taken. That they're already mean, married. So. so, my mom made that cover. That wasn't official. Uh, Thanks, Mom. Gary Deer! <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Lance. Speak, man. I am doing great. I've decided to leave my uh, incubation quarantine pod for today um, and give you a little bit of festive cheer um, yeah. behind. You have a, a beautiful Christmas tree, which uh, I don't know if you guys can see it there, but it's loaded yeah, with yeah. high heels and pink balls. So it is very gonna, much I was going to ask, what's up with those high heels? Those... That was my idea. Stripper, you got stripper, stripper novelties hanging from your... <laughs> well, they're actually my shoes. I have deceptively small feet. Uh, I take them off the tree and just pop them straight on. <laughs> well, you know, I, I got to say, I really enjoyed the backdrop, Gary. It, I think it's going to even itself out. Your elitism with the festive background is going to come together today, and you're going to be a normal person this week. Congratulations. Wilson, how you feeling this week, man? I'm feeling all right, but I keep staring at all the hot pink on that Christmas tree behind Gary, and I can't look it's away. Nice. <laughs> it is. It's it is very hot eyes. pink. It's very pretty. It is. <laughs> it is gorgeous. Uh, not me. I haven't up to much. We uh, actually. <laughs> there it is. There's the, there's there's the high heel. That, that makes oh, me wow, think. look at that. It's all it's like it's embroidered got, and everything. He's bayonetta shoes. He got bayonetta shoes on his Christmas tree. Yeah, no doubt. That's <laughs> exactly. Uh, this week, uh, purchased a uh, PC for the lady for Christmas. Yeah, so I heard. Can... I heard that you didn't get her a desk, though. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> Just make her cross leg on the floor like a Japanese gamer. Like, what is this? He got her down wow. there doing. Fuck that one up. Didn't even get her a desk. You dick. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> Forcing her to eat with chopsticks, no matter what the food. Now she's got a game on the floor. What the part is now? I feel yeah. kind of bad. Like you just kind of exposed the shit out of me. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to. I was just making fun. <laughs> no matter what. To say now, I'm yeah, taking it so, back. Okay. <laughs> Because after the show, when Revolver Live episode 21 is gone, you're going to walk around the corner and Sam's going to be on the floor looking at you. She won't even know what to say. You know what? All you got to say is Briar Rabbit and continue on with your night. It was Briar's <laughs> fault. He said, You're already getting her computer. Don't get her a desk. That's what? where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson, it's true. I am plenty capable of getting myself into trouble, Wilson. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Oh, it's so good to be back, guys. Revolve Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's amazing YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed of the video or the video formats on YouTube, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. With that, welcome to Revolver Live episode 21. 21! We we're old enough to drink and we're old enough to do some other stuff that Gary talked about pre-show. <laughs> Only in the UK, though. Uh, for those quick curious, uh, it was sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I've, I've been hearing good things about sodomy. I can't wait. <laughs> The funny thing is, is that he's not kidding. <laughs> this, is not totally kidding. Not, this was the conversation before you yeah. we went I swear to you, this is the conversation. Gary, mm -hmm. he's like one of the encyclopedias from hell. The stuff that you just know you would never want to know, he happens to know off the top of top of his head. Oh, well, He probably Googled minutes. it today. You, you play games with him. He's got one screen playing the game. He's got another screen next to him where he's... He's on Wikipedia just researching the most fucking ridiculous shit. Yeah, it's he's awesome. Like, he, he's like the, yeah, the NC-17 rated version of Wikipedia. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of like that scene in Fifth Element. I don't know. Again, it's a throwback reference here, but uh, it's where she's like flicking through every page in the uh, in the yep. dictionary and just absorbing it. Um, like you say, I do that on Urban Dictionary and just kind of just learn. Um, <laughs> Picture uh, Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Input. Need more input. <laughs> He's just flying through everything for a little bit further, of that. Old school, further back. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> we're always happy to have you around, Gary. You, you bring a degree of knowledge that no one ever thought was coming. And to be totally honest, after the show, I'm going to tell my wife, 21, old enough for side of me in the UK. And she's going to say, fuck. Thanks, Gary. All right, so episode 21, we got some interesting topics, and uh, before we do that, we're going to do some house cleaning. Would you guys like to get started with our introductions for this week? Well, first of all, I think that our glorious sponsor, which was mentioned, needs their ad read, uh, because there are times in your life when you want to give that special someone the perfect gift, a gift so precious and majestic the mere flowers, perfume, or aftershaves just won't cut it. No, for times like these computers and desks need to happen if you obviously get the computer but don't want to spring for the desk then what you can do is show them the caliber of your persons and your true intentions and that ladies and gentlemen can be achieved through a small jewelry box filled with a variety of colored male genitalia bagadix.com offers an anonymous mail order service where you yes you can send anyone you desire some purple headed yogurt slingers they have a smorgasbord of products to suit each and every one of your specific pork sword needs including the brand new Box O oh, Singing Dicks, which uh, BC had the pleasure of listening to for over three hours last week. Revolver are pleased to announce our sponsorship and we'll be offering you, our perverted and debauched listeners, the exclusive and frankly ludicrous promotion of 20% off any order from bagadix.com using code Revolver Live. I can't guarantee that the recipient of your Giggle Stick Love package will offer you the sexual favors you so desire, but let's be honest, it probably can't hurt your chances too much either. If you're not convinced about, or if you are convinced about the perfect marriage of penis and confectionery, head straight to bagofdicks.com and remember your Revolver Live promo code for that sweet discount on your order of baloney ponies. <laughs> thank, you. Let, 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 thank you. Thank you, bagofdicks.com. I want to say this. No matter what happens, every week when, when Gary reads that, it's the fucking first time. <laughs> I, was the say, first I look forward it, to it every yeah, week. It's good stuff. It, I love it. It is something that it's, it's spiritually uplifting. It's like, you know, you just had a great day, just came out of church. And, and it's because you heard Gary read our the introduction. The church of bagofdicks.com. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's great. 
I didn't read my wedding vows with that much conviction, but when you truly believe something, it's <laughs> easy to deliver it with poignancy. To me, it's just comes natural, so true. Too. Gary is so Very right. natural. Like, just when you, I think I've, like, heard everything in that ad read, you hear, like, baloney pony. Uh-huh. <laughs> yogurt slinger. Yeah, man. Purple-headed yogurt stuff, slinger. Gary. Oh. So I've Wilson, never slung um, yolk either, so, I mean, it's, I haven't been using my, uh, in the, Wilson, in the way. we yeah, know but. you've been... Uh, a dick to your other half this week with the desk, but you've also been a dick to everyone else on this show. Yes. Golf with friends. Yes. Fucking Wilson. Yeah, fuck you, Wilson. What the fuck? I won one round out of three, and you guys are going to come at me? What is this? Listen, man, this is called the Revolver Team Up. Revolver, this is when we, we're going to vote. You fucked us last week because you knew what the hell was going on. <laughs> you, may, you, may not, you may not have won every game, but I feel like you lost them on purpose because... He was making just unbelievable. Listen, last week we played golf with friends on PC. Probably one of my favorite PC games now. I played it about four or five times since. And Wilson was so damn good at it. And he had to slow down because we started to notice. Briar started to notice. Gary noticed. And I love Wilson to death. And I noticed in the end. I said, this fucking guy. We, we, we'd start off in a playing field and you couldn't even see where the ball was supposed to end up. Wilson would pivot. Strike his ball, yeah. jump over a valley, and say, "I got it." Hold on, hold on. What the hell is happening? Look, man, there's obviously a game of skill. All right, come yeah. on. I mean, and you know, some things you're just born with. And yeah. uh, apparently, golf is one of those. I think about going golfing in real life. I, I think you are, you are a savant uh, in golf. It's like Rain Man. You know, I don't know how many. Uh, how many two picks you be able to golf count? with my friends? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're definitely Rain Man of Golf with My Friends. And can we add that, that was... to the intro, Beastly? Can we get that as a. <laughs> yes. The, the Rain, Rain Man, Man of Golf with Golf with Friends. friends. I, mean, I, I sat there, and to me, it was like a recreation of White Men Can't Jump in Golf with Friends. Like, yeah. he was the geeky Woody Harrelson sitting on the side pretending not to play and just got up there and, and just absolutely fleeced us for everything we had we were yeah. shocked talking about revolver plays what you, the hell is it what why were we playing i'll tell you friends? what, what is, this is i i started winning one game and all of a sudden my frame rate mysteriously dropped to about 18 18 i, saw that. I was pretty suspicious that maybe wilson's got an in with the developers here and was uh you know working some backdoor magic was which scripting. is now legal in uk I was was scripting. I was all up in it. You know what I mean? I'm that competitive. You know what I mean? Like, forget, forget the crucible, forget, forget overwatch, call of duty, all that. Where I really get competitive is golf with friends. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty evident. And and let me just say guys, uh, Gary Diaz did make the reference to white men can't jump. And when it comes to uh, golf with friends, Black men can't golf because I came in last place on every single game and I felt good about it. Yeah, really playing it was, up to the stereotype there, basically. Well done. <laughs> it made me feel good, you know? I, I don't mind, you know, bringing up the rear. Just making sure you guys get where you need to go first. And, you know, I, I'm here to build you guys up emotionally, spiritually. And when I see you guys put it in the hole, just like I would in a, in a, in a train, I come put mine in the hole last. So, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh my goodness! All right. Well, speaking of revolver plays, what are we playing on Tuesday? Obviously, oh, 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 I'm so excited to announce this. I, I announced it on Twitter, and I hadn't had a chance to play it. I actually started playing it yesterday for the very first time. Fortnite Battle Royale. We're going to be yes. playing this on the PS4. I believe it does work with crossplay with PC as well. Uh, I started playing it. With my wife and my sons, Nova played. My both of my sons played. My girls got a PS4 for the holidays, so Wait a minute. everybody in the house. Is playing it. it works with crossplay. Like yes. that game has PS4 players playing against PC players. It does apparently. Wow. I yeah, think so. only in group play because you have to invite someone into your group and queue from there. It's like there's a weird workaround to it. It's not just like open crossplay. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. you open your group and you invite someone into it on another platform. No, well, we'll crossplay be, aside, well, Beastly will be open in the group. <laughs> yeah, I'll, crossplay aside, I'll be really excited that we're actually going to be playing something that's a little team building. I kind of feel like golf with friends was like knock your friend down a peg or two. I feel like while the team got golf. built. It was the three of us against you. Yeah. 
<laughs> and this week we're going to bring you back into the team. Out of probationary off. status. I'm just going to throw every game. I'm just going to put I balls ask? in front of you when you're trying to kill people. <laughs> Am I the only one here who doesn't know what Revolver Live is? What is it? Why do we do this? What is it? You how mean can, Revolver how can, Plays? Uh, yeah, Revolver Plays. Sorry. Who, how, do, how do I know where to find it? What is it? Why do we do it? Revolver Plays is a new segment that we are putting out for our viewers and for ourselves, as Wilson said, is kind of a team building exercise where every Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern, we get together on the same place, set in the same channel, twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit, and we stream, live stream us playing a video game. Every week, one of the hosts will pick the next game for the following week. Last week, Wilson picked Golf with Friends. And we all know why. And this week I chose Fortnite because I really love PUBG and I had never played this game. My, my kids play it all the time and I was hearing a lot of good things about it. And it's something we could all play. It's free to play everywhere. And so I figured, hell, why not? And now I'm really depressed that I didn't. So next week, who's going to be picking the, the next game? Briar, you or, or uh, Yeah, I'll has. pick I'll pick for, well, on next Sunday's show, I'll pick for the following Tuesday. So this Tuesday evening, uh, we usually get together around 5 p.m. Eastern yeah, five. Uh, to start playing. 5, 6 p.m. Eastern, depending on kind of when everybody gets home and uh, gets fed and all that stuff. Uh, and we'll start playing at that point. And this week will be Fortnite. Next week will be something else. It'll be, um, you know, we'll just kind of randomly go through the games, trying to be as inclusive as we can with all four hosts uh, and all, all the platforms that we can get everybody on. And Fortnite was a great choice because everybody can play it. And it's so fun. Oh, so, I can't so, wait till next week. So we we're going to have a real discussion. It might be a topic on you guys' thoughts on Fortnite versus PUBG. It's a big thing on the internet, YouTube. There's tons of videos uh, accenting one versus the other, the pros and cons, what one might do better than the other. So we're going to have two hours to play this this week. Uh, hopefully when we come back for episode 22 of Revolver Live, we'll have some deep thoughts about these contrasting games. Yeah, Super I'm commit this some... week. I did get some uh, requests to start uploading that to YouTube, so maybe, maybe me and Beastly can both upload that to YouTube as well. That'd be a good idea. Um, I'm also going to commit this week and um, going to do a al alternate perspective this week, so I think it'd be nice. a good time to fire up the Revolver Live Twitch channel Nice. and uh, stream from that so you can get multiple angles of all the madness, all the ridiculousness. Uh, we'll be sure to pimp that out uh, before... Uh, Tuesday and uh, while Briar is streaming. So you can drop by, give us a follow, get a different perspective, and we'll try to alternate hosts uh, each week for that as much as we can um, and even oh, try I, to get it I even try to it. get it up and running in between Revolver plays where we kind of want to get some people on there streaming throughout the week so you can get a little glimpse of some of the more personalities outside of here. and Yeah, be cool. Exciting so news. Look forward it's to that. Exciting news. Okay, so we know what we're going to be playing next week. There is a little bit of Destiny news in our introduction. Uh, Mr. Diaz, would you like to get started on that? Just a really quick breeze over. Um, obviously, we spoke Curse of Osiris last week. Uh, there was an update to Destiny 2. It's free to anyone who has the base game, so you don't need to have Curse of Osiris to it. Um, Masterworks, it's effectively improvements on weapons. Difficult to find, a bit of a grind. Um, I'm having a ton of fun with it. How are you guys finding it? you enjoying it? Is it good is it bringing you back to the game it's it's cool it's brought me back um i like it it's i mean it's nothing revolutionary it's nothing too crazy but it is uh satisfying when you put in some time and you do get a masterwork to drop and hopefully it's for a weapon that you do like if you don't you can always dismantle them save up those cores and put it into a weapon that you once become masterwork um I'm I'm excited to uh, see where this evolves. Maybe potentially with the mod system that they're talking about working with. Maybe it'll help work. And maybe this is such a small change because of what they have planned for the mod system might go in tandem with it. Potentially, I don't know. Maybe not. Um, it is. It's it's kind of bringing me back, man. But honestly, really, the the only not really the only thing, but the thing that brings me back the most, and it sounds cheesy, is just playing with friends. You know what I mean? Playing with the homies, hanging out, having a good time. Um, there's still well, a lot of changes that need to be made. I don't think it's the end all, but I, I think it's a start. I haven't had a chance to try the, the Masterworks uh, new DLC at all. I've, there's been a huge Christmas holiday sale going on on PSN. I'll let you guys know at the beginning of the week. I bought Street Fighter and all the DLC packs. I've been getting my game up playing that. 
Uh, and also, I bought a ton of PSVR games, and I fired that up over the weekend. I think Friday or Saturday, I, I fired that up and played for about four hours. I was playing Paranormal Activity today. So, I mean, I got a lot of other things going on, but I'm definitely going to hop back into Destiny very soon. This is the first time I haven't played Destiny in probably four or five days since it's come out. So, Well, Beastly, you mentioned uh, Street Fighter. Um, I heard that um, there's going to be a new Street Fighter that was announced that's supposed to have every Street Everything. Fighter ever. Yep. I'm pretty excited about that. You going to be hitting that up? Oh, of course, man. That Dude, is. We should hit oh. that up. I, yeah. I, would, I would love to. Revolver it'd be, it'd be plays my, that. Please. It would be an honor to get my ass whooped. And, and Briar, this is old school Street Fighter, the stuff that you used to play when you were a teenager as well. Street Fighter Alpha, Alpha 2. So uh, it has this, third I, I heard about this announcement. Stuff. It's not one of our topics, but I wouldn't mind talking about it because I'm a little bitter about this one. Oh. I just bought Street Fighter 2 for $40 on the on the Switch. Switch. And there's here comes another fucking collection that's going to have like everything. Everything. I'm going to be like, God damn, I'm buying Street Fighter again. <laughs> the one on Switch. I, can't, I, I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I already expensive. have the exact same one, minus, I think, the two characters that they added on PS3. And so, and on the PS3, it's the same resolution. So I was like, why would I? I just can't, I can't justify that purchase. I, I mean, I, li I live in a house with people I bought it who because I had a trip coming up, and I wanted something to play on the plane and, you know, something easy to pick up and play while I'm, like, sitting in a lobby or waiting for... You know, I just couldn't imagine that. playing that with the the controllers, the Joy Cons. Mm -hmm. It seemed like you have to be, you know, play with a pro on that thing. The pro controller is way it's better. The, for sure. It's the thirtieth anniversary one coming to Switch, though. I thought it was PS4, Xbox One, PC. I didn't oh, even know it if it not was coming Switch. To Switch. I thought it was coming to Switch. I don't no, know. I might be. Switch. So can't. No way. I might this be. This has wrong. all the Street Fighter Three. Why has, couldn't they come to Switch? It's just I think it's way too much content. Personally, that's what I think. These games it, are it, like it's, 25 years old. Well, not that old, but I mean, know, some of the older ones for Super any, Nintendo. You're looking at you're, you're looking at like the Super Nintendo era. Uh, you're looking at like, like 16 two megabyte megabytes. Yeah. yeah, no, you're looking at like Dream, two megabytes. Like, Dreamcast, yeah. uh, like Street Fighter Three. That's Dreamcast era. Can we use Chat Google here again? Is that a, a facility <laughs> that we have available to us? <laughs> we, uh, I heard, uh, I heard it's gonna be really cool though. Like they're gonna have a lot of. Um, tell a lot of story and lore within these it's not just going to be like here's the games like a lot oh, of them really? are going to have adding yes content to they're, wow. they're going to have like cut scenes and like st like a story mode that like goes all the way back to the beginning are you Fighter, serious alpha yeah. is i love that series i think it was like a somehow an unloved series but i really enjoy it i didn't really dig on third strike all that much uh or street fighter 3 basically all that much i just did like the characters and the character design and the art style didn't appeal to me that. as much um, is it going to come with Street Fighter Four as well? No, I don't think that's so on. It's, it. it's it's. I think it ends with one Street Fighter, Street Fighter One, Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Turbo. Two Turbo, Street Fighter Super Street Fighter Two, Super Street Fighter Two Turbo, Alpha, <laughs> Alpha Two, Alpha Two, Alpha Three, and there's third, Street Fighter three, three, Third Strike. It's like it's it's quite a package, and if they're gonna yeah, add it has three stuff, Street Fighter Threes on it. All three versions okay. of Street Fighter Three, so I it's, buy it's a this. serious game. I might buy this, but I'll, if I buy it, I'll probably buy it for PC, so it's just an evergreen copy, <laughs> so that when I buy a PlayStation Five, I'm not thinking I gotta buy another one of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what, if you if you guys get it on PC, I'll, I'll grab it on PC as well because this is a game I would, I've never played any of you guys in a fighting game. I love to play you guys in Tekken, Soul Calibur, Street Fighter, Mortal I'm Kombat, sure you anything. Wipe the floor with us, like no doubt about it. But I, I'm I'm just talking I, about the I, fun I, I love Street Fighter. My Hadouken's strong. Hadouken. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't played me yet, brother. Now, I've, now I'm reminded of the division. Gary Diaz, we we all downloaded the division today. Division is right now is I think twenty seven dollars for the gold edition on Ubisoft. It's only it's only that price for like ten hours more or something like that. Um, so me and Wilson both bought it and downloaded it. Gary met us in there and he gave us the hot tip for the division: is you change the uh, voiceovers to the Japanese, <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese dubbed voiceovers. And it adds so much to this game. Really? <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm telling you something incredible. really basic, like you need to go down the street and take a left, and it's like Shin Goku de do Kodasai. <laughs> like it's all really like to the point. Like, and you're like, oh my Focus. god! Like oh. it's really good. 
It, wow. it and you can really still play it. The, the subtitles are all still English and all the UI and everything's English. You don't change that. Wilson did. Yeah. He went for the hardcore mode. God. Oh, uh, God. I don't know what the hell was happening. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, I changed all the, the text language on the screen and I just started freaking out. And they both had to pause their game and like guide me back through the menu <laughs> and get me to change it. It was awful. It, it was It was terrifying. fun playing that game again. I haven't played it in a long time, but I... I'm looking forward to putting a little bit of time. I think after the show, I'll probably jump back in and try and level up a character because I bought the PC version like a year ago, I feel like, and then returned it because it didn't run good on, on the current graphic card setup I had. I had two RX Radeon RX 480s running a Crossfire, and it just ran like trash, so I just returned it. Uh, and then I bought it again today uh, with the, because of the 1.8 update and because it was so cheap on uh, the Uplay store. Um and we're having a little bit of fun with it. I'm looking forward to getting back in. God damn, that game looks gorgeous. It's just a it gorgeous does. game. Pro tip, Uplay store. If you've got 100 Uplay points, you can cash them in for 20% off your basket. So if you pick that up, you can take another 20% off if you've pretty much ever played another U Ubisoft game. Because like 100 points you earn pretty you much what? for turning the game on. Right now, I just feel good supporting Ubisoft too. Like the uh, Ubisoft moves they're making, shit. what they're doing right now... It's like the only company out there that I feel like they're just they're worth supporting. <laughs> you know, like they yeah. just feel like they're they're supporting their games, they're trying to do good by their consumers, by their fans, by their player base. I feel good. I feel good supporting. It does. Them. I really like that you can use those you play points towards yeah, that's cool. saving like that's genius. Like you could do something in game that could potentially help save you some money down the line. Um like when BC, I don't know if you're familiar with you play. No, I, I thought that just um, you know, I, I'm playing. It's it's um, it's basically like it's Ubisoft's Steam, but it's Ubisoft's, version of Steam. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you can get Ubisoft games. Um, when you unlock achievements in uh, a game, you get you play points. Um, so each achievement is worth a certain amount of points. If you save up those points, you can use them to save like twenty percent on a game. Wow. Yeah. I, so you can use them to buy like a stuff for games too can you, yeah like, D dlc like in, in um in the division there is some like cosmetic outfits like uh, a fire a new york firefighters outfit or something um and you can use your uplay points to purchase that as well so if you unlock the achievements in the game you can then use that to purchase cosmetic outfits and dlc for that and other games that's so it's, it's a genius man it's a great system yeah beautiful well i mean i think that if it takes off steam's gonna have to do something to you know, of course, Uplay doesn't have the amount of games that Steam would have, but that's a, a very attractive uh, promotion. It would really pull people towards playing more Ubisoft games. Um, was Assassin's Creed Black uh, Flag still free on there, Gary? Yeah, that's Do still you... free right now. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are uh, listening so. live, go hit that up. I think it was only really? free for like three days. I think it's still it might be till the eighteenth. In fact, I think fifteenth through the eighteenth, maybe. Or it might be 12th through 15th. It's three days of free for Yeah, I don't Black know if it still is, but go check it out. I don't have but I definitely scooped computer, it. So I can't look. Love All right, games. so moving on to our very first topic. This is going to be a short show for me, guys, unfortunately. But fortunately for me, today is my daughter's birthday. Nina turned five, so you guys wish my five-year-old happy birthday in the comments. Happy birthday, I'm, Nina. Happy birthday. I'm, I'm going to be leaving at seven today because we got some birthday shenanigans to do. And Gary is going to pick our next topic. I see you in a... In our topics, Gary, where would you like to go next? I think we can roll quickly into Games Development Sustainable, which is our is first Is Games topic, Development Sustainable? Ubisoft seem to be killing it as a pub or publisher more than a develop developer and publisher. I guess they kind of do both dependent upon what they are. So my question or my topic that I'd like us to kind of dig into is um, really around the whole thing about games development on the whole. I mean, studios are closing left and right. You know, Visceral Games, Lion's Head Studios, Guerrilla Cambridge, Runic Studios, Telltale Games, which didn't close but had layoffs, Housemark, who are not making their, their um, I guess, the genre of game anymore, which is like the um, the bullet hell Metroidvania kind of game. Um, Volition, again, the Agents of Mayhem developer, lost a ton of staff. You see developers moving towards shady um, ways of monetization, so loot boxes and really um, spurious DLCs that may not be worth the value or cutting content out of games. And then you see people like Ubisoft who somehow are making it work and CD Projekt Red, again, making it work. So in your mind, is 
games development sustainable anymore. The, the crunching concept of, you know, poor developers who will work 100 plus hour weeks for six months before a game launches, only to have us tell them that it's a half-baked cookie and that it's a dead game and people should refund it. You know, it's not really a fair um, way to compensate someone who's put a lot of hours into building a game. What, what do you guys think? Is it a job that anyone would want to get into? Because applications are down 65%. Well, I mean, it, I think that this is ubiquitous across many facets of our society. I think that the time that a developer or a person crafting something, putting into a particular project, it might not translate well on the consumer side, depending on the product that they're actually making. Uh, you mentioned CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red, of course, they spend a ton of time on their games, but their games are usually amazing. That's why it's working for them. If you spend a million hours developing a game, a million man hours, and you put it out you know, in Game Informer, and you put it out in these video game magazines, how long it took, and people play it, and it's a subpar experience for them, or something. it's not something that they necessarily would gravitate toward, it's going to reflect that in society. And it might reflect poorly on your bottom line if people feel like, hey, this is an okay game. I saw someone playing it. I really, it's not for me. It all depends on the genesis of your project. It all depends on the genesis of thought and the direction that that, that developer wants to go with their project. And some of these developers create diamonds constantly. Naughty Dog, Rockstar, uh, Ubisoft to a degree. Some of their games do well. I think Assassin's Creed has done well over the years. Uh, what I think is a, so special about Ubisoft right now is that they don't necessarily drop diamonds right off the gate. They might they drop a lump of coal over but then time. They, exactly over time, they just keep supporting the shit Rainbow out of Six these games. Siege, right? Rainbow you guys Six told Siege, me last perfect week. Example: Wildlands, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, yep. The Division, For Honor, For Honor, Honor man, dedicated For Honor. service. Now, now I have all of those games. I I played all of them briefly. I think I played um, Rainbow Six Siege for a day. Uh, Every game we just mentioned I have, and I've played for less than a day on all of them because they were pretty crappy experiences. I remember Gary talking shit about me playing some of these games. Are you telling me that now these games are really good? Well, Wildlands just got the yeah, Predator. Ghost Recon. The Predator now is now cool. fucking running away, running around. You mean <laughs> the Predator from the movies? Yeah, yeah, the Predator from the movies has been added to the game. They uh, for the license to the real Predator. Can, and Rainbow the Six is, was one of the most popular games on Steam a couple of days ago. What? Yeah. yeah, like it's it's that game has just gotten more and more support as its life cycle has gone on. Uh, the division just got update one point eight. We're almost three years after launch. Yeah, uh, and it just got update one point eight, and by all accounts, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, and I was really just shocked. limited to Ubisoft only no. games. So we spoke all earlier about Mario Rabbids, which is a Ubisoft Nintendo crossover. They added co um sorry um versus battle modes to that for the free update so they, that was already a knockout game people loved it and now you can play against your friends in online versus modes which yeah, is i think game here. development we're, we're straying off topic game development is in fact sustainable but you have to put out a good product because this game that you're selling right now is not just you're not just trying to sell this game but you're also trying to sell the next game right and th that's something that i think cd project red has done phenomenally is they put Mass out a complete product, and then when they sell a DLC, they put out a complete product. They don't, they don't try and abuse the customer with you know microtransactions and uh, you know like hidden fees and stuff like that. Like so many games have now, when you go to a CD Projekt Red game, you feel like you are buying something from a trustworthy per developer, right? Absolutely. Like, and based on their past record, you also feel like you're going to get a quality product right at the get go. The Witcher 3 had problems at launch. Like, you know, it had real problems at launch. They they did a lot to fix that game over time. But, you know, they did stick with it. They put out two amazing DLCs, and they created one of the best games that I think has ever been. Wow. But, well, I mean, if we're talking I, CD Projekt Red specifically here, just to add a bit of spanner to the mix, um, in uh, Jason Schreier's book, Blood, Sweat and Pixels, he talks about yeah. the development of Witcher 3 at length. And CD Projekt Red are very, very open in the fact that they are based in the fucking sticks in Poland, where employment is very cheap. Yeah. Um, they pay very little to their staff. They said, if you work here, you work here because you love to make games and you want to be involved in that. And they work very very long hours so they've said you know that there's no magic secret as to why they do it except the passion to bring a good game to life but these guys that you know that's the that's that's the secret to games development a, a guy who can write code 
can go make two hundred thousand dollars a year writing for you know an office suite, you know, to ask sweep the legs about it, and then, <laughs> or they can work double the hours for half the pay and make video games. Like that's well known, right? It's like yeah. it's a thankless job. It's a, it's passion, a hard yeah. job, but if if that's your passion, then there's no other job for it. Well, I think we're at like a couple things to say here, real quick. Um, I think like what we're at kind of an an awkward stage of video games right now. I think things are trying to are starting to change, and people just need to catch up. And I think what's starting to change is being connected to your audience, whether it's through social media, whether it's through Twitch streams, anything. Developers are way more in touch with the the player than they were a long time ago whereas before you put the game out and you worry about that initial sale and then people don't play that game anymore now when people find a game they like they want to continue to play it so developers are forced to continue to support it um another thing too is that i think we're in an era of companies having to learn from their mistakes and not only learn from them but act upon learning from them afterwards and Games like Division, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, those are perfect examples of listening to your player base, taking the feedback, and implementing it correctly. And I I wish that's something that <clears throat> Destiny 2 would do a little bit more of, like um, could make the game a whole lot better. But it it's, like I said, I think we're at just a, a really awkward stage of um, game development now, and people have to listen to their player base to give people what they want and if they want them to continue to play the game. Couldn't have said it better myself, Wilson. 100% agree with you there. All right. So any closing thoughts on this uh, this conversation, Gary Diaz? It's just I thought it was an interesting one to muse. I mean, I didn't want to go too deep on it because we've got a lot to talk about today, but it's um, it's just interesting that we're seeing – People that we never thought in the industry, um, you know, we never thought would disappear, uh, are just vanishing. Um, we're seeing studios that we thought were write-offs, uh, like Ubisoft. Again, Ubisoft used to be a joke. You know, there was the meme of Oopsie Soft when people <laughs> thought they were like they were. A, a <laughs> I remember that. Too. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing them, you know, grow and evolve and take shape. Um, so it's just interesting to see how some developers are are thriving in this market and others are losing consumer confidence. Well, you and also give the, Ubisoft- the rise. A little bit of extra credit too, because they're fighting the Vivendi takeover as well. On top of that, they're they're winning over the hearts and minds of gamers. So they're they've got to have more stress on their plate than going through like the worst divorce of all time. They're they're basically fighting for their life and keeping consumers happy. And to me, that's a double whammy. Well, it's not a current comparison, but you don't want to end up. <clears throat> you don't want to be the next Konami. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Someone who was at no, the don't. top. <laughs> And then down, you know what I mean? And a lot of that had to do with the way that they treated their employees and stuff. But like, I mean, you've got when you get on top and you stay on top, you, you've you got to do that by giving your fan base what they want. Gamers have memories, too. You know, like yep. if 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 a gamer feels f- fucked over by a company, they're going to remember that the next time that company is releasing a project project. You know, there's a lot of talk about um, EA and uh, is it Battlefront? Battlefront. Battlefront, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and one of the games in my social circle that's been really like kind of been looking forward to, really hyped up, is Anthem. Uh, and since the Battlefront fiasco, a lot of people are like, you know, Anthem, we're looking forward to it, but it's an EA product. Is it just going to be a fucking another loot, mm-hmm. loot fest? You know, another another yeah. uh, loot box fest, and that's really concerning because players have that memory. But you know the. CD Projekt Red is coming out with a new game, Cyberpunks, you know, sometime in the future, theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and people have the memory, well, Witcher 3 was un unfucking believable. Sure, it launched with some issues, but over time they kept supporting it. They made awesome DLC for it. This is whatever they charge for it, I'm buying. You know, like this yeah. is an easy pre order for me because, you know, I, they've earned my trust, whereas EA has not or Activision has not. You know, I, I'm struggling with that right now with Bungie. Is you know, Bungie is a company that used to have my trust absolute, uh, but yep. recently they've completely lost it. Well, Brian, I agree. it's 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 a double edged sword, but I think it's a good thing in the in the end. EA is lauded now in public space as being one of the worst when it comes to video game publishing, uh, especially when it comes to this loot box 
you know, this whole fiasco. And I think that everyone raising their voice at the same time, voting with their wallets. Of course, Star Wars Battlefront 2 has been a huge blunder for the company. People are voting with their wallets and it's going to, it'll be a deterrent for them in the future. So if they don't want the same thing to happen to their next big franchise, more than likely they're going to come out and do something slightly different. They might take a step or two back, but they're not going to keep going in the same direction unless they want their company to just go under. I think that's a good thing that so many people stood for something and said, no, this is just a bridge too far. You know, you're nickeling and diming us constantly. I feel like I'm not buying a complete product because you're trying to sell me so much of it after I pay for it. The thing is, EA is still out there, you know, talking to their shareholders saying they're, you know, they're, they're going to keep doing the same thing. Like, yeah, they're going to pull back on it compared to what they did with Battlefront 2. They feel like that was a misstep, but they're they're not pulling off of that business model. Like, they, mm. they see it as a hugely lucrative way to it may, do business. It, it may be to their peril at some it point in the future. We'll see, uh, you know, we'll we'll see, see. what happens. I'll tell you one person who's happy about uh, the, the way EA have been acting. Konami, man. <laughs> Konami loving it. <laughs> They're not the bad guys anymore. You, you got a good actually, point, Gary. <laughs> they've been worse than Konami, so that's something else there. You know, it's positive. Um, I think that it's that time way. to. I think we should transition <laughs> on um, because BC's got time for one more topic, and I want him in on this one. Brian, do you want to move on to your topic? Uh, yeah, sure. What was it? Are games held back by their licenses? Oh, okay. For, so or franchises held back by their licenses. What do we think? This is topical to what we were playing today, The Division. I always thought The Division could be a cooler game if it didn't have Tom Clancy's name on it. And I, I've been told uh, that Tom Clancy's name actually helps sell that game, right? It's like, you know, somebody who wasn't, isn't necessarily into a video game may see the Tom Clancy game and say, mm -hmm. you know what, I really like his books or I really like those movies. I like those franchises. I'll check this out. Um, but to me... It's a detriment in the division because it limits what that world can be. It limits what can be in that world. It limits the weapons to relatively realistic weapons. It limits the enemies to human enemies, basically. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the division, you're set up to have, you know, some kind of mutant or some kind of zombie, you know, based on like the virus that happened there. And how much more interesting would it be if you had, uh, you know, an enemy that had a million a million health points if it wasn't just a six foot tall dude yeah. <laughs> you know like it's always yeah. been a disconnect how come if i headshot this dude out on the street once he goes down but if i headshot this dude a hundred times he's still coming he's still coming like it never made sense it, i don't care okay his raincoat must be really powerful because <laughs> <laughs> So like, <laughs> like the easiest way to solve that problem in the division would be just kill Tom Clancy's the Tom Clancy name off and add you know, you can you don't have to go crazy with like make it like a full on like World War Z kind of thing but you know maybe like small mutations have you know created the more thing. powerful dudes yeah um, you know other things yeah. kind of in that same vein is the Assassin's Creed origins game that i've been loving lately is still tied to assassin's creed and it doesn't feel like it needs to be and in fact yeah. some of the things that tie it to assassin's creed kind of pull it down a little bit for me namely the animus really if the animus wasn't in that game i'd like it better every time i get pulled out of egypt which i'm really enjoying or into the past egypt which i'm really enjoying into future egypt in the animus just like how you know, how do I get through this as fast as possible so I can just get back to having fun? <laughs> That's how I felt in the very original. <clears throat> yeah, it's exactly honest. the same. There's a button on uh, in the UI for Assassin's Creed Origins that you can manually go into the future, so you can switch back. I don't think anyone has ever pressed that button. <laughs> I don't even know what <laughs> ever go? Yeah, why would you if there was to? a button that said "Never take me back to the future," I would definitely <laughs> click on that one. Because yeah. it's not that that story isn't interesting; it's just that it breaks up. It's it's not the same game at all, you know. It's it just pulls me out of the story that I'm really enjoying. And the, Assassin's Creed Origins is it's a wonderful game. Like it's just absolutely incredible. Exploring ancient ancient Egypt, going and seeing the pyramids, the lighthouse of Alexandria, you know, exploring this world. You'd think it's just, oh, it's just a desert map, like an open world desert map, but it's actually a really interesting place yeah. to explore. Great quests, great characters. Um, but man, you get into that animus, it's just like, 
man, it's, it hits the brakes on that game in a hard Kills way. the immersion. Yeah. So there's, for, for are me, there though, games Brian. that, like, if they were pulled out of the franchise they were in, could really be improved? That's the, that's the question, right? Okay. Now you've clarified because initially it wasn't really about the franchises. It was the licenses in particular, a la Tom Clancy. Yeah. But now, now – yeah, I think it's it's feasible, it's possible, but if you if you look at it from the perspective of a developer or someone who's trying to generate income, if they have a franchise or a notable name that they can tether to a product or a property, who wouldn't? You know, it's it's easy front end money, and, and a lot of games that, that go out there only make front end money, and the back end is kind of slow. It, it's a definite decline. And is so Tom sometimes Clancy's name selling that game to you, like this. I mean, Tom look Clancy's look at all the Tom. I mean, how many Tom Clancy games have there been over the last three generations, Briar? They've all been huge successes for the most part. I think you it's know? two different audiences, though. If you're talking about the video game audience and the book Versus audience, the I can tell you right now, there's probably very few people who have read every Tom Clancy book that's going to go out and buy a game just because it's got Tom Clancy's name on it. There's some people yeah. who just want nothing to do with the video game in general. Um, I think like to start with a game, it's it's good to start your franchise to have a, a premises around something. But I think long term, if you're going to continue to pimp out that title and make more, you do need to change and evolve in some way. Otherwise, well, it's just the but, same shit but over. You, another aspect of it, though, Wilson, is Tom Clancy, of course, is synonymous with the books and the movies Hunt for Red October. All this stuff goes together. But the games have kind of created their own mythos. You know, a lot of these games, some of them are built made off of books. But just for instance, we got Ghost Recon, The Division, Rainbow Six, Splinter Cell. Uh, and, of course, Ghost Recon goes all the way back to the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. Right. Hawks. I mean, these games have been very successful with the Tom Clancy name. So it's kind of built its own ecosystem now when gamers hear that name, Tom Clancy, yeah, they might not think about the books. They're going to think about uh, an old Ghost Recon game or a Splinter Cell game or something like that. It's going to be a completely new environment so, for them. Let me ask you this, Weasley. If if they were to announce uh, the Division 2, right? If, you know, like mm -hmm. say they, they came out tomorrow and they had a trailer for the Division 2, would you be more excited or less excited if it had the Tom Clancy name on it? Um, for me, it would be... Uh, Honestly, I wouldn't care. You know, I mean, as as someone who's played the game before, I, I kind of know what I'm getting into. I think that for it's more for people who are coming into a franchise. No, but I mean, you've played the division. You played Tom Clancy's The Division. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. So to see it not there would mean something, right, to you as right. a gamer. So I, I, th I, I think I think with it not being there, the game has more flexibility. The game has more flexibility, and if if Tom Clancy's name wasn't tethered to it, more than likely it, it would it probably be a better game at this point. There's more flexibility to the world and to what can happen in the world of Tom. You, like there's as you a, said, or, there, there was a game that came out. I don't know if it was this week or last week, but it was um, it was a side scroller kind of Metroidvania uh, type of game that was tied to the new Tom Cruise The Mummy movie. Demastered, yeah. Yeah, mummy, the mummy demastered. Apparently, the game is pretty good. The movie sucked, and I wouldn't want to play. It's tied the game to a movie that. that was absolutely fucking garbage. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I don't know. That, like, does that movie is that game getting helped out because it's tied to that no, movie? No, it's definitely I not. I mean, I mean but would we even know that. about it if it wasn't tied to that movie? Well, I guess it all depends on the on the license or, or you know the particular franchise. I mean, can you think of a Tom Clancy game besides maybe The Division when it launched that you didn't like? So I many mean, of them. Are... I mean, there, there's there's been a few. Uh, what was it? Uh, there was like a Vegas one that I wasn't a fan of. Um, but like back to Briar's question, I would be more excited about just The Division because like what you're saying, it allows for more possibilities. Flexibility, maybe yeah. what Briar was saying about the virus evolving or something like that. That's what and I kind of thought initially. New enemy types. Game, yeah, that we would see other things other yeah. than human beings. Something similar to the flood from Halo. You know what I mean? Just some sort of mutated enemy, you know, like that's running rampant. Uh, I would be more excited about it. But then again, like I'm not the type of person that likes – well, that always wants that realistic combat, you know what I mean? That Call of Duty experience, you know, I know I could be, I know we all like sci-fi experiences, but there's yeah. some people that potentially don't, 
You know what so, I mean? But that, and, the division, the funny thing about the division is that it has like a realistic look to it. But I mean, I haven't played a lot of 1.8, so maybe this is fixed. But when I spend six clips shooting the same <laughs> dude <laughs> in the like, head too, bro, in the head, there is a serious fucking disconnect that has always been like kind of. I mean, a turn off for me about that game. Mm-hmm. Parking that um, itself, like the whole thing of, of how many bullets it takes to hit someone, the division, like you say, once you cut the veneer of, of appearance away, it's an RPG, an action RPG functioning at its roots. Like there's no realism in the sets. There's no realism in what the guns do, the abilities, the fact that you can like mass resurrect, um, you know, the fact that you've got guns that like allow you to um, start fires with like bullets and that's it's just there's a lot of different things that just aren't realistic in any way. So like you say, I think that they take liberties with the license in some ways and have things that are very much not of this world through the abilities and armor sets. But then the lore and the story and the thing that was, I guess, the um, the set piece that was written by Tom Clancy, the premise that was written mm-hmm. by Tom Clancy or approved by him is kind of that's canon and they can't now deviate away from it and I like you said I think that's a, a strong point to say that the established canon holds it back in a long way and even Destiny pivoting back that way I feel like Destiny's held back by its canon to an extent in the fact that we have to get everything law approved as such like we can't do this because there's a law reason that it can't happen and you know you have to have this happen because this is the law and like even crucible that's anything is, with nerd culture though man you know, if you yeah, don't get the law right you just get ate up man you know sometimes like, it's better to say fuck the law they did in the division and they made it a better game like the 4v4 team deathmatch was something they'd adamantly said we can't do because your agents and rogue agents and why would you just have a set 4v4 deathmatch it wouldn't happen and then this patch they've just said Fuck it, you know this is what people want. It's, it's <laughs> Make up well your received, own premises. You know yeah. what I mean. Use your own imagination. Why are you engaging this other group of four agents? You I, know mean, what I mean, why have why have uh, why why have been there? There been six master chiefs fighting each other for yeah. years. You know, like <laughs> PVP is, point. you throw the window. Up. The well, they call that the PVP. suspension of disbelief or whatever. Like Precisely. you know, you just kind of make up your own thing. You know, like I. Mi- Maybe that guy gave you a dirty look when you walked past and you guys decided to fight. Stepped maybe, on your shoe. Maybe he named his PUBG character after your mom. I don't know. Like, Are you know my mom, bitch? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's totally understandable. And before I go, I got two minutes left. I'm supposed so to be leaving at seven. I want, <laughs> I want to real quick get into the topic, one of the topics that I, uh, I added for this week. Yeah. Greatest gaming Christmas gifts. Now, this could be something that happened last year or happened when you were four. But I want to know from you guys, from your childhood till now, name the greatest gaming Christmas gift that you can remember. You're short on time, Beastly, so you go first. Okay, well, for me, I told you guys pre-show, it was a shitty thing that my mother did. My mom was always into her relationship more than her children. It's a sad reality that some parents are into, but that's how my mom was. She was constantly chasing behind these guys who were out in the street doing whatever they were doing. And we were kids. And, and, you know, me and my older brother, we we loved our Super Nintendo. We had little siblings who would sit around and play with us. And uh, I can't remember the exact year, but this is right when the uh, Super Nintendo Super Scope came out. Sega came out with their own little peripheral gun. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but I can't. And the Super Scope 6 was Super Nintendo Scope. And this year in particular, we had mentioned to our mom, who didn't have a lot of money, you know, my mom was very poor, that we, we really wanted this thing. And we hoped against hope that we would see it. And she uh, bought it for us, uh, I want to say when I was 11, 90, maybe 90 or 91. Uh, and she hid it from us until Christmas Day. And I remember opening that up and playing it and putting this little dongle in front of my TV and holding the scope and shooting it and how special that was for me that my mom actually cared because she she never showed any signs that she gave a goddamn about what we were doing, what we were playing. She was downstairs handling her adult life and we were upstairs playing our Super Nintendos. And this was, it always stuck with me as a very special time. Since then, I've been able to, you know, work and make my own money and, and take care of myself. But that was one of the most special Christmas gifts I had got and I was a, a young kid, me and my older brother. We played the shittiest Super Nintendo games you could ever imagine with our Super Scope 6. It came with a cartridge that had about six games on it, and each of them were shittier than the next. But, you didn't get Metal Combat, man? That was like the best game ever on Super Scope. That was badass. 
it was like Gundam anime, like screen scrolling, like oh, whoa, like flashy Japanese. And tell me this to, shit now. I never even heard of the game. You, you had you to <laughs> Google it when you get a chance, and then you had to like. It was like your mech was traveling, like the background, like they're all like whoosh, dashing around, and you have to like shoot certain parts oh, of their no, armor no, and no, expose no, no. their. We, we definitely had that. I just okay. Didn't all okay. Right, all right. I definitely remember that. Okay. I'm I just sorry that you didn't get a menacer, which was clearly yeah, the the superior. <laughs> the, the are, you, are you being facetious right it now? Had, it had two scopes, two of them. Did was, were the games any good, Briar? Terminator. Really, the arcade? Yeah. Oh what? Oh yeah. God. You do that. Those scopes suck though. He's just I being take it back. Mom, it mom, had mom two scopes. of them. <laughs> it had two two scopes. It well, had a me... removable stock. It had removable scopes. You could do lefty or righty. That's why it had two of them. <laughs> it was like you the Queen Breaker bow. You saw you use them together, <laughs> Briar. Look, a placeholder <laughs> though. Uh, and this this happened when I was an adult. <laughs> right when I met you, Briar, when I first started my YouTube channel. One of the greatest Christmas gifts I ever got in my life was when Kate brought me my Final Fantasy sword and she brought me my first Elgato. And I, I that's helped, pretty I, good. I arrived. She brought me an Elgato. She brought me a thirty-five pound steel Cloud Buster sword from Final Fantasy VII, so I could fuck somebody up and record it on TV at the same time. And that was a, a great placeholder. So let me hear you guys. What was one of the greatest Christmas gifts you ever received concerning gaming? Who wants to go next? Wilson? Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. Um, let's see. Okay. First thing that comes to mind, without a doubt, um, I think I've mentioned it multiple times on the podcast, um, but uh, the year was 1992. And all the boy wanted for Christmas was a Super Nintendo and Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. That's wow. all I wanted. I, I had mentioned it. before that I had tore out the JCPenney catalog page that had it. <clears throat> also store, stole uh took out some of the the lingerie section as well uh, but as one does yeah that's that's just the standards that was like before the internet that's all you had yeah i know man it just I know. whatever whatever you're into those ladies were, were in the were old in uh, the catalog the, so. the sloggy the sloggy support suit oh. you do in these days <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had the I had the underwear catalog, and they were always they was never in good underwear either. It was always like the um the kind of well, like the supportive well, the shapewear, well, you know that mm. kind of stuff, you know the 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 hold you in the, the skin colored underwear as well. If you really got your hands on a Victoria's shape. Secret catalog, you were in good shape. You know, it's kind of off topic, but we used to steal Playboys from my neighbor's garage back in the day. He had a bunch I of Playboys. I used to watch stuff. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda's workout routine with Aunt Betty. That was a fine chick back in the fucking 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Jane in the, Fonda. In the UK, we're some dirty fuckers. I don't know if you guys had the same, um, but our newspapers, you know, the Washington Post and whatever, we had one called The Sun. Um, and the son would have the page three girl, which was basically just an excuse to have a woman with her tits out um, on page three of the newspaper. So you'd turn the first page, you'd just be like, that's lovely. And then continue with your news. <laughs> what a great that's... way to start the morning. <laughs> that was it. I, I had to stop it recently because, you know. Innocent fucking it's... story again. A fucking super <laughs> We've t- We've bastardized it to our, to our talking about our I'm first I'm okay board. with it. This is, this is actually the, this is actually the greatest <laughs> part of my life was the <laughs> CCPenny catalog <laughs> cutouts. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. To be honest, no, this uh, is a topic really. What did you do before pornography? This is our next topic. Yeah. Right. Uh, what so no, basically, would you stoop to? <laughs> I had made it very, very clear that I wanted a Super Nintendo with Link to the Past. Um, got up on Christmas. Uh, of course, my mom made me open all my my shitty gifts, you know, as you'd say as a kid, the crappy gifts, even though it was all good stuff, like stuff I needed, clothes, whatever. Got to the Super Nintendo, and that was it. There was no link to the past. There was, there was, there was Super Mario World, but fuck Mario. I don't want the red hat. I want the green hat character. Yeah. So... I kind of sulked for a few minutes, and, and my dad totally did the whole Christmas story. Oh, what's that over there? It's like <laughs> looks like Santa left Some another one Rider behind BB the gun? TV, you know? <laughs> yeah, and you know, did the whole Christmas story thing. Went over there, got it. No one saw me again for like three weeks because that's oh, all I did. Oh man, like, I love that Wilson. That really? warms my heart, man. That's yeah, awesome. Dude. It was you like, drink, like, what was your reaction once you opened the package? Uh, like, I mean, I would say like Nintendo sixty four kid levels, like for sure, like just I, I don't even know if you can put to words like it's it was just it, it seemed very un- unobtainable to me for some reason um i kind of had 
an idea of the value of money back then. Yeah. And it just it just kind of seemed like it was just something that was going to be so unobtainable. So to see that mom and dad pulled through on that. And I mean, I played that thing for fucking ever, dude. Like, I still have the damn thing. Like, it's that's beautiful, man. I yeah. Mean, does it say more about me that throughout that story there? I was hoping that when your dad told you. There was a present behind there. It was just not linked to the past. <laughs> oh, it would have been like no, it doesn't say anything that we don't. Like killer instinct school yeah. and all, but if it would have been like anything but linked to the past, like oh, they'd have fucking hurt. I'd have totally been a spoiled little brat. In primal some... rage, primal rage. That's just it. Be... Or I'd have been like, we're going to grandma's later. Maybe grandma got it for me. It was like, like a textbook <laughs> for school or something. It would have been great if you were honey dick <laughs> there at a young age. Like... My dad's like, here's a rake. Now go do some shit. Here's a snow shovel for Christmas. Now go fucking snow shovel the driveway. That's it. <laughs> dick in a box. Inner Black says, you should have got a dick in a box. It would have been a good teenage gift. All right. I'm going to stick around for the rest of these answers. Right. Gary and Fire, what you guys got? Go ahead, Gary. Well, I have a, either a very bad memory or a very poor childhood, which poor, um, poor I don't know. Person. One of the Here's two. Go. Um, but I can't remember of any, to, to be honest with you, I actually don't think I got many, um, gifts at Christmas. I tended to get it when the game or the console was released. So it was like interspliced throughout the year as it happened. But if we think about a Christmas gift that I can remember, I bought myself, um, a Christmas gift in 2014. Um, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're really, the, the, that's not a gift. <laughs> that's, that's the, the, the greatest thing you've ever bought. I ever gotten. <laughs> Came from himself. <laughs> greatest gift he ever got was gifted <laughs> by him. That's what the actual fuck Gary Diaz. Oh, sorry yeah. to derail your story, but <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I just I can't remember waiting. It was one of them things that is like, I'd say to my mum, you know, the PS 2s coming out, and she'd be like, Oh, when's it coming I'll out? Be I'll be like, I don't five know. Five minutes, guys. Okay, go for it. I'd say like I don't know, November tenth, whatever, and she'd be like cool do you need me to order one and just say yeah and it would happen like i wouldn't generally wait but moving forward like i i i got more um what's the word uh, a little bit more like um tight with my own funds like i didn't really spend my own money on stuff when it was spending other people's money i'm quite happy to do it but with my own i was a bit more We've noticed. um <laughs> yeah, a bit more withheld um and i've been a pc gamer for like the longest time I hadn't owned a console since I moved out from my own house and I just, you know, didn't feel the need for one. Skipped the entire Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 generation, which was like almost 10 years. Um, only really had a PS2 when I was very young. Um, anyway, PS4 had come out a year ago, still not really paying it much attention. Um, and then a friend of mine at the time said, why don't you get yourself a PS4? You need a Blu-ray player and this Destiny game looks like a lot of fun. So I picked up the white PS4 um, in 2014 with the original copy of Destiny. Um, I picked it up as a Christmas present, so I started playing it uh, first week after Christmas and got to be honest, thought this game is overhyped. The score of six was right. It's junk. Put it down um, didn't touch Destiny again until The Taken King. Uh, and then obviously it got its teeth in and um, we are where we are today. And why I think the PS4 was the greatest gift I ever got for Christmas, which I bought myself, um, <laughs> is because through accident and, you know, buggery, we are here today. Right? All because of that purchase of a PS4 in 2014 and a copy of a god-awful game called Destiny. And... Through that, um, yeah, it brought me to you guys. It brought me to a lot of the friends that I still play with now. It brought me to communities that I've been taken back to PC and slowly, like, you know, I'm almost like a splinter agent working from the inside to bring the guys <laughs> out of console. But, um, I knew it. But, yeah, it's it genuinely has. It's not so much what the console did, but the fact that it changed the habit of my gaming so much from where I was to where I am now um, that it has to be the single biggest gift that I can remember opening on Christmas Day um, and pretending to look surprised in as I wrapped it myself, but there we go. <laughs> you really well, should give yourself a hug and thank yourself for such a thoughtful and kind gift. I'll give myself a hand job later. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see Gary like 
ripping through presidents like oh socks throwing them aside oh and just throwing all this shit aside and then he gets to the one who's this from and you know it's his playstation and he's all excited well, no, about my, it it was my fiance at the time and i said to her well, we were living together and i sort of said to her well what do you want to do for christmas and she was like would well, you want to just buy yourself something and we'll wrap it up and we'll open it on christmas day as if we bought it for each other and i was like yeah go on then that'll do so i just bought myself a playstation and result it ended with a playstation Yep. <laughs> Mr. PlayStation, PlayStation yep. 4. Congratulations. PlayStation 4, because if it wasn't for PlayStation, he'd have never met all like a lot of his friends and everyone and stuff. So to be totally honest, Wilson, I'm not sure Gary ha- has more than three friends, real friends anyway. Congratulations. Uh-huh. I mean, three <laughs> is two after question- golf with friends. He's <laughs> <laughs> three is questionable. I'm only holding on because he showed me what I need to get for my PC. That's the only reason. <laughs> I, think I, I also, I, to be fair, stuff. I'm also your anime pornography dealer at times. <laughs> it's a handy one to keep around. That is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't so, want to lose that connection. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it's he's like my little crack dealer. He says, hey, Beastly, I got something to show you. And then everybody else disappears from the chat. <laughs> then I know it's time. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, show me what you got, Gary. <laughs> I call with. The dismissal of my time, guys. I went. There's family here, and everybody wanted to sing my my daughter happy birthday, so I wanted to be a part. No of problem. It. Yeah, man. Uh, so I'm going to take a technicality on this technicality on this topic. It doesn't actually say in the topic that you had to have received the gift. So I'm <gasps> going to go with a gift that I gave, a gaming gift that I gave, and it was uh, when I first met my kids. So I I got married. Uh, whoa, Jesus, how many years ago? May 16. Um, <laughs> um, to a to a woman who already had two kids, and they were nine years old when I met them for the first time. And I remember that when they first came over to my house, you know, I was an adult male with a ton of free time on my hands and like every video game thing you could possibly Ever. want, hooked up to this giant ass TV. You know, in my living room was a big ass TV, two couches. And like video games Every everywhere, game. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's I was a that's single dream. dream. I, I was, yeah, it was the dream. I was living the dream. Beautiful. So they would come over, and it was almost like video game overwhelmed. You know, like uh, I, you know, they could play PlayStation, they could play Xbox, they could play Nintendo. Like I had DSs hanging around, I had PSPs hanging around, or Vitas. Man. I don't even know which, which one was. I love you, Briar. I love you, man. And they would just be overwhelmed by it. So, um. <laughs> We did Christmas together that year after meeting, um, and I decided that it'd be fun to get them an Xbox 360 because they didn't have one. But being the asshole I am, what I did is I took I bought the Xbox 360, and I took everything out. And actually, I was kind enough. I hooked it all up to the internet, so it was all updated and ready to play. It was actually all hooked up on Christmas morning. Damn. Um, but I then filled the box with underwear and socks, and I wrapped that fucker back up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> of course he did. Of course. So it was so exciting to me <laughs> <laughs> to hand over this Xbox 360 box filled with underwear and socks. Like it really was. Like we filmed it. You can actually watch that shit on my YouTube channel. <laughs> no shit. The I'm rock comes. Sure the we, rock comes. Yeah. We we put that shit on YouTube. You gotta look way back to see. I'm pretty sure we put it up on YouTube. I, I'm almost positive we did. You did, yeah. did, you did. I saw it. It, it. it was hilarious. The look in their eyes, because they knew. <laughs> like I didn't fool anybody. They're just like, really? Where the fuck is this? <laughs> where's the <laughs> Xbox? Yeah, Again, where's the Xbox? I feel like I'm a terrible human being because that's not the way I thought the story was going. <laughs> you think when you said happen? you took the Xbox home took it out and emptied it out. I thought you were going to swap it out for yours and give them the pre-owned one. <laughs> you were going to update your <laughs> Dark Souls, update my man. Xbox. <laughs> I thought you were just buying yourself. You're like, this one's close to Red Ring, so this is going to head down the street. It's so dark. <laughs> you know, this one's been making some funny noises. It's had some questionable moments. I've already That'll bought do. four of them. I'm sure. uh, I got to watch that video again because, man, that one puts a smile on my face every time I watch it. Oh, that's, that's uh, funny. Be so, be so update, guys. I am able to stay for the rest of the show. Oh, okay. Because okay. I, saw, I saw my daughter open up the gift, the big gift that I wanted her to open, and I'm back. So. Nice. Cool. Oh, yeah. 
you only missed my story, which was almost not worth missing. So. It, yeah, well, you said PlayStation. That's all I wanted to hear. All right, so let's move on to the next topic, which would be greatest. Why buy new games? games? That's a great one. Yeah, why do we this? buy new games? Why do we buy new games when we know that if we wait a year, it's going to be half the price and twice as good? We're playing. Me and Wilson and Gary were playing the division today. We paid twenty seven dollars for it. Some of us paid twenty two dollars for it. It is by far a superior game than the game that launched three years ago. Why buy The Witcher when it comes out when it'll be all fixed and patched up, and you'll get the DLC for free if you wait a year? Why buy Destiny Two in the current state when you know that after Comet it'll be much more like Destiny One? <laughs> Why buy Destiny 1 when it was launched when by the time that thing was end of life, it was a fantastic and huge I will experience. tell you why. Okay. The reason why, and this goes for every game you mentioned. For people who are looking forward to games, and you know they're going to come out, you know they're going to be $60, you know they're going to be broken, they're going to need updates and patches. The feeling of knowing that someone else is playing it, and you're just sitting and waiting, is too much to take. Yeah, but you could, a, you could be... Instead of struggling with Destiny 2 right now, you could be playing a fully completed game like The Witcher 3 and I'm... like exploring a world that is unbelievable. And if you run into any problems or bugs, or even if you don't like the graphics, you could fucking do like a palette swap for the graphics because there's mods out there that'll do it for you. Like, for me... You could... You can spend far less money on old games that are far better than current games. <laughs> yep. I'm actually going through this right now, right? PUBG is out on Xbox 360. I mean, Xbox One and Xbox yeah. One X. You don't want to touch it, that thing with a 10-foot pole. I don't. Right? I don't. Oh. I don't. I'm playing Fortnite. <laughs> I don't want to play it. I don't want to buy it. It's 30 bucks. I was like, oh, but it's PUBG. And, and my son's like, a dad. It's so dad. bad. You know how much you love that game, Dad. You need to get it. I said, but son, it's so fucked up. He said, but Dad, you know, even they're going to patch it. They're going to make it better. I'm looking yeah. at my son. Like, you suck of shit. But I didn't buy it. Yeah, you could Ooh. have you could have Early that $30. Buy you could have that $30 in your bank account earning interest for you, or you could give it to them and have it in their bank account earning interest for them. They got too much money for me already for Christmas. They ain't getting <laughs> shit out. <laughs> shit. You know, it's in a you really get, poor state right now. On yeah, the, uh, from what I understand, it is, but I'm actually going through that, and for me, it's still a decision. You know, I spent probably over the last two days, I probably spent $150 on PlayStation. You know, uh, all these sales. I've been buying games, just buying like a fool. My wife looks at me and says, "Why are you buying it? You're not going to play." I'm like, "I will. I never do." But for for uh, PUBG, it's one I know I will play. I know it looks like crap. I watched Digital Foundry. I was so excited. I tweeted about it before watching the video. I watched the video. I was like, "This is." I just tweeted about this shit. And I know Gary was laughing when he watched. It's not that the video. only mistake you've made on Twitter lately. <laughs> <laughs> a mistake to you ain't no mistake to me. But um, yeah, I'm actually going through that. Uh, that that feeling of wanting it because it's new. It's available. My friends are well, not my friends. I don't have any friends on Xbox. Sorry, uh, but there, there are people out there playing. Yeah, it's got a brand new one. I know. <laughs> oh, I have, I'm not gonna friend his uh, ass. Are you tripping? No, he bought, in his words, gold, he bought so. a Blu-ray player. <laughs> yeah. He did not say I bought at first an Xbox One S. He was well, like, I twice bought twice as much use out of it as you are. You use it as a USB charger. <laughs> Look, look, let, me, let me tell you the only the God only reason it. Xbox is not even <laughs> look, to be totally honest, and it, this is not this is not a slight to anybody playing Xbox because I do think that you know multiplats and, and some uh, you know exclusives are great on the Xbox, but I'm more of a PlayStation guy. It's just the truth. My Xbox is not in my office anymore. It's in my my bedroom because my PlayStation Three has started to crap out so on me. I like me. to make sweet sweet love to it every Thursday night. Yes. <laughs> It's true. It's true. So my Good. Xbox is there, and I'm actually going through that, Briar. You know, the, the thought of buying a new game, even though I know it's crappy, I just don't feel like PUBG is going to stay crappy on the Xbox. I think they're going to figure it out, and they're going to at least get it to a, a solid 30 frames per second at some point. And when they do that, I'm going to be able to enjoy what, I, what I've always enjoyed about the PC version. I can get 30 frames easily on my PC higher than that. Easy. But so why just, would you buy it again? You already own it on the PC. So, Hard for me to do this. I'm just look. Listen, man. I'm unlike you, bro. You, grew up you plug a controller in. It's the same fucking thing. They put no aim assist on it. 
Like it, there's no difference. Like you can not, just plug it's a controller not really in. Made for that. It's not. It's not made for that. If you plug it into Steam, this little thing pops up, and you gotta kind of configure it. It's not made for for a controller. It still, it arguably, feels the, the same Xbox way. One isn't either. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was gonna say. Have you seen people trying to aim in that game? It looks like you're trying to use a controller on the PC version. It's, it's just. It's I played not it before with, on PC with the controller, and I was like, this doesn't feel like it's supposed to be uh, on a controller. That game and, makes me want to be a Gary Diaz and go get a Zim 4 and just mop the fuck up. <laughs> because I've still when I watch footage of that game, man, nobody can fucking aim in that game. But if you had a Zim 4, I'm guessing that you would be able to and you would be at I'm, a significant how, advantage. All the PC me, options I mean, on the console version, Briar. If you plug in a mouse and keyboard, you can open up all the options that you can on PC on the Xbox One version. Oh, you don't so even they, need the Zim? No, you do. It, the keyboard works, but the mouse doesn't. Keyboard, mouse doesn't. Oh, okay. So, so part of me wants to plug the Zim in, but then I haven't got the Xbox One X. I've only got the One S. Uh-huh. So I'll be playing it like with great aim at 15 frames <laughs> 15 a second. Frames so it's, per second. Like, yeah, it's like, I, don't, I don't. I I just I can't support an unfinished game like why, that. Why is There's that no bad? reason. Oh, it's only one stage. How is it that far from the? It just Look, doesn't make any I'm sense. I'm not going to support unfinished games like PUBG when there's finished quality games like Destiny 2 out on the market. So. What about Fortnite? Oh, or like so PUBG I'm not the saying, fucking PC, which we I'm, played this week. <laughs> I'm not talking about a game that's not finished in early access. I'm talking about a game that was supposed to be fully released on Xbox One, and it's a pile of shit. You, game preview. Bad. Game absolutely preview. Right. That's, absolutely that I won't support, but... I, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, it is kind of hypocritical to say I enjoy the game on PC and it's an early access. But when a game's supposed to be fully released on a console in disc form, there's no reason why when you drop down that you should get to a solid 15 Mississippi count before. I'm going to be completely in. honest. I don't. I don't <laughs> think it's. I don't think it's Blue Hole's fault. It's. It's not Blue Hole's fault. You've got a machine which is what 1.1 teraflops of power and you're trying to put a hundred people's actions in it simultaneously on a world with immense draw distances that you're dropping out of in a play it's just not feasible like fortnite works because the fortnite graphics on works. it are not going for but they're not going for realistic military sim looking game like i don't think it's blue hole's fault i think there was a commitment made to put it out on the xbox the one x apparently is near 30 frames most near. of the time um you know, so it, it's doing the job on the One X. I think the One S is a legacy issue. I don't know. We yeah, can say it's an unfinished great. product, or we can say it's a product that never should have been out on that platform, which I think is more of the case. Not yet. I think if given more time to develop, it'll be fine, especially on the one at, on the X, on the the more powerful Xbox. I think with given time and uh, more time for them to optimize the code and whatnot, it, 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 sure it could run on there fine. But right now, I feel like it. Needed more time for development. I feel like a after facelift. release, it's really starting to play well on the PC. Yeah. If they facelifted <laughs> and made it look like Team Fortress 2, you know, if they took it out and made it that, that kind of polygon art, Team Fortress 2 looking shit, it would probably run well. But yeah. I don't think they're ever going to get PUBG running well on the One S, my view. Really? Um, but but well, why I still do got games? A one. I don't even have the S. The S is faster than the One. Yeah, I got the One too, Briar. I should, I should I clarify. I got the VCR too. The my, footage my controller stuff. says day one edition on <laughs> <laughs> one. That's no awesome, bro. That shit Judgment came with day. a connect. <laughs> it, I, I should I should clarify that the footage that I'm referring to oh, and stuff shit. not rendering in is PUBG running on the original Xbox One, not the S or the X. But I hear it's runs much from what I've seen, it runs much worse on the originals. And I don't feel like that should have been an option for release, man. That's like it's it's breaking like you try to go into a house that hasn't rendered and your character starts like free falling when he's on the ground and stuff and it, you can't shoot people and it's it's really unfortunate man i had high hopes for it because i wanted it to succeed and i hope that they can fix it and make it better um yeah, it, it will I, I think they'll get it running i i know, I know gary's so. pessimistic about it but i mm. i think it's there's gonna be a lot of money thrown at that thing to make it run well on xbox because the xbox one X doesn't have a lot going for it as far as software goes, and that is a huge, big title. So to get that yeah. thing running and playing well, I think is pretty important to Microsoft. I, I mean, if if anyone can do it, it's Phil and his golden swinging dick. So he needs to sprinkle some of his 
love seed that way and just make it happen. So I, I, I believe in Phil. I don't believe if in his love in, seed is money. Then I think it'll, <laughs> I think it'll get he sprinkled to, pretty heavily. <laughs> he needs to show I mean, us the way it's meant to be played. <laughs> on the topic of money and new games, I, I never weighed in on, on whether I buy new games or not. I buy a lot of games. Um, you guys know I, I tend to yeah. buy uh, a hell of a lot of games. Yeah, you put you put together like collections. I do. I there's there's two reasons I buy games, and none of them are because they're new. I have almost no interest in owning a game because it's new. Yeah, you know, for games out there, and they see the new release for games, it's it's not enticing to me. I buy it for two reasons. <laughs> One, because I support the developer or the hardware. Um, so the Switch on the Vita. I love the Vita. I love the Switch. I've got 34 Switch games um, and a lot more Vita games. And the Switch games, I've probably only played 10, 15 of them at any length. But I really like what Nintendo have done with the Switch. And if there's a version of a game on the Switch that I think I may play play in the future, I'll just buy it now to support more developers bringing more games out. I mean, my money doesn't count for much, but if everyone has the same mentality as me, then we'll see a snowball effect there. So that's one thing. Um, and the second reason is I buy games because they're cheap. So I will consistently, this is more of a PC thing than a console thing. And, and basically you mentioned that there's PlayStation flash sales, but not to the extent of what you can get on the PC. So if you look at, again, I'm a, I'm a man with no morals and will pretty much <laughs> You say anything. it's so proud. It's, it's crazy. I, it's I so am. casual. I'm a, I'm a man with very little or no morals and I'll happily look at grey market resellers um, and key sort of websites. Um, so for me, if I'm, I'm, I've got my daily sort of flash alerts from all the different key resellers, you know, the, the, the dodgy websites that are stealing people's credit cards. Uh, and if I see a game that I've always wanted and it's sub $5, I will pick it up and put it in the Steam library. Why not? You know, and, and that's how I that's how I've built my library. There's the two reasons that I buy games. I do the same thing, Gary. If I see something on sale for a couple bucks, I'm like, eh, fuck it. You know what I mean? I Especially, could... like, if, you, if I think I might want to play it later. Like, I might not yeah. play it now, but that's how I bought I bought Skyrim and then <clears throat> yeah. didn't play it for two years because it was, it was five bucks when I bought it. And then bought Skyrim Special Edition the last Steam sale, <laughs> so I haven't played you, that. that you'd be bucks. dumb to not to, you know what I mean? When it's on, <laughs> when it's on sale like that, you'd be dumb to not pick you it up. So I would have learned. I never played Skyrim. Why am I buying the special edition? <laughs> because it's special. It's different. It's all in from the, the title. Rest. Right? It's in the title. <laughs> yeah, special edition. Boom. The one you don't own. Um, I don't know. It's a funny thing, you know, that we keep we keep building, buying into this hype, but we keep getting disappointed by it too. When I buy a new game, like if my friends are playing it and they're having a good time, I want to have a good time. So that has a lot to do with it. Like if I see my friends having just a fucking blast, I'm like, I could be having a blast. We could be having more of a blast. So <laughs> I could be having a blast. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's part of it. Like your friends are playing it. Everybody, you, there's like a community kind of around that game for a very short period of time, and it might be on YouTube. It might be, you know, your friends. If Wilson, Gary, and Beastly are all playing Fortnite, well, I want to be playing Fortnite because that's where my friends are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if they're all playing The Division, well, fuck Fortnite. I want to be playing The Division. <laughs> and if we're all playing The Last of Us, Brian's going to find new friends. If we're all playing the friends. Friends, if we're all playing Golf with Friends, <laughs> Then I want to be playing the division. <laughs> oh my god! I was gonna say, if we're playing golf with friends, well, apparently I'm the only fucking one. Yeah, not and anymore, if... Wilson. Not anymore, man. I'm and if we're all go. playing Destiny Two, I'm still not playing it. So anyway, <laughs> our last topic is um, your Christmas games uh, video game wish list. Mm. So this is my topic. Um, I'd like to start it off with a, a freestyle reinterpretation of a rap song. Uh, it's time to go back to how we played as kids, but times have changed, and that's the way it is. So um, what I'm going to do <laughs> is uh, give you $60 to spend on a year's worth of gaming. So this harkens back to Wilson's Whoa. story. He is a kid. It's Christmas. You've got one game. Your mums and pups, you know, they're not well off, but they care. They love you. And yeah. they say, Jimmy, Jimmy, you've got $60 to pick video game or video games um to play for this whole year you happen well you know mum and pup have only got 60 dollars to buy a game but apparently they are they've purchased you every console for some reason i don't know they're, they're, they're the crazy consumers they've bought no games but all the consoles um you have the 60 dollar budget um you are not 
allowed to purchase latter DLCs or season passes with it. So if you're going to get the season pass or DLC, this has to come in the $60 initial budget. I'm just letting you know, that's all you're getting. $60 is all you're worth this year, Jimmy. Um, What do you do? How do you spend it? What would be the best use of this $60 for you right now in 2017 to spend your year of gaming? What, What do you want for Christmas, Jimmy? I tell my mom and dad I want to snap pictures of panties like Gary Diaz and Gun Gal. <laughs> Your parents are going to fucking love that. Your okay, parents are going to be like, you're not allowed to fucking hang out with Gary Diaz <laughs> again. I always knew that, that, that You got that right. Gary, is there um, a multiplayer in that game? Is there any way uh, we can make that a revolver play? <laughs> there, there is not multiplayer, but there is a VR version. Um, the one cautionary tale that I'll tell you, Wilson, is that whilst the game is very, very cheap, the DLC... Um, to get the see-through clothing, as we have found out, is much more than your budget for the year. So but you already you're, told you're... me I couldn't get DLC, Dad. So fuck you. No, no, you can if it's in the budget. <laughs> if it's in budget. So if you're able to get The Witcher, let's say, you know, the one that you've just said, the gold edition is what, like twenty-five dollars. Okay. That's you know, you can have that and something else with it. So how are we spending our money to get a year's worth? Do we want something super hard? Do we want something that's open-ended, like Stardew Valley? How, how do you guys go about this? This How did you is so do it as a kid? Much easier than it was when I was a kid. I remember oh, one year I got my Christmas present for that year was Teenage Mutant Ninja Tur- Turtles for the NES. Look, it lasted a while because it was hard as balls. So it was hard, also a bad fucking game. It was just bad. It was a poorly yeah. designed game. Bad. It's just hard. Like, okay, hear me out. Uh, it is hard. a little funny on some of the enemies unless yeah. you're donatello because on the he's the alpha he's the best um he has the best weapon but the swimming stages to progress and the fact that back then that when you lost all your lives your game when it said it game over. over it meant, it game, meant game fucking over, over. yeah reset from the beginning if you put that stuff aside i think relatively it's a good game but it was extremely frustrating even for fast reflex little briar that we barely remember anymore. <laughs> barely remember. <laughs> um, it, so anyway, like you compare a sixty dollar game compared back then to what is coming out now, that is constantly getting updated. It's getting free map packs. It's getting DLC. Like if you got a Call of Duty game, like in the modern era. For that's a game that you can play all year easily. Your friends will probably be playing it all year. It's gonna get supported all year. Uh, if you got, if you got like Rainbow Six Siege, it might last you two, three years. If you got Destiny, it might last you two, three years. Yeah, you're gonna need DLC eventually to stay Would to you- stay up to date. But that's a much smaller ask. I can tell you from you know paying for these things for my kids, it's a much smaller ask than for a sixty dollar game. It's well, that's the thing. Do you look DLC. at a game? The thing that jumped to me. If I was going to say one of them, it can't be something like World of Warcraft because that's out of budget. You know, yeah. I can only play that for three months and then I'm done. Yeah. Um, Overwatch. That's so my Overwatch game. Overwatch is that's, a game. That's a good one. Right now. That's a great yeah. one. My kids play a ton of Overwatch right now, and it's. I think part of it is for that reason is it's they don't have to keep throwing money at it. The loot boxes give them a sense of achievement over time, but since it's not at all connected with actual money for them, it's only a reward that's earned through in game. It doesn't have that seediness. Um, that I might associate with it because it's constantly calling me for my wallet, but since the kids don't have access to my wallet, that call isn't there, <laughs> or it's not going to be it's, answered it's anyway. It's like $30 at the moment for the edition, yeah. so Ooh, $30. Destiny, yeah. Weren't you telling us, Gary, Destiny 2 right now is like $18 at GameStop. Uh, yeah. Equivalent, yeah. $18 brand $18. new at the UK. That fits in budget with both DLCs. You could, year. you could, yeah. you could get the season pass in it as well yeah, if Overwatch you wanted to. Right I don't know if that'd be a good buy though. I mean, Destiny. How much can you play it? Could you play it every day for a year? Yeah, I'm saying that's the only game. I mean, if Probably, you buy all the I've DLC, the what do you got every left? day for three years. <laughs> True. But the last one was a little bit different than Destiny Two, though. For sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, the last one, I, I believe that you know, as time went on, they added to the game in such meaningful ways it kind of changed the dynamic of play. Destiny Two is still kind of in its infancy. I feel. I think that over time, they'll, Ooh, they'll definitely the change it. on sale today and Overwatch. That's, that's what, what I mean. I think, so I think do you go for a brand new game or do you go for two? With Division what? and Overwatch, because anytime 
especially Overwatch, because anytime you could potentially expose your children to the wonders of Hanzo. I'm hanging up know, on him now. A- Don't worry, guys. It's happening. <laughs> 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 you see now, uh, my my pay answer um to to elaborate there i did say overwatch should be one of them see i'm I'm pretty much a, a blizzard fanboy here i'm just i'm as as, as deep throat as as briar was with bungie i'm you know. right there with blizzard right now um would be the one hand you've got overwatch for your competitive pvp needs and then for your endless grind here diablo 3 oh Okay, uh, I was expecting World of Warcraft this entire time. Can't do it. Can't afford time. it. Can't afford can't it. Afford yeah. it. But Diablo 3, you could definitely afford. You can probably get the Ultimate Edition, right? And that comes with, like, everything? Uh, you only get the Reaper of Souls um, in the uh, Console Edition, or you can get the what's the the, the PC one plus the, the new Necromancer. The Necromancer is like a $10 DLC. Oh, okay. So in budget, for $60, I could probably get Diablo 3, the Necromancer DLC, and Overwatch, um, and then play those three. Beastie, sorry, you were going to jump in and I... Yeah, I just wanted to go real quick for my sixty dollars. I've already mapped it out. It doesn't matter what console or what generation, correct? No, you know, you've got them all. You've got every single console that's ever. I do in real life, so a... we're we're really gonna do this. And, uh, okay. All sixty bucks and a PC. Go for it. The first game I'm gonna buy is Street Fighter Five. It's fifteen dollars right now on sale on PSN. That's fifteen bucks down. Then I'm gonna buy Castlevania Symphony of the Night. For PS Vita, PSP, and PS3, it's cross by. It's five bucks right now. So that's twenty dollars I spent. Hey, Overwatch yeah, all game. Three versions of it? Yes. Overwatch Game of the Year Edition is $30 right now on PSN. That brings me up to uh, $50. Borderlands Ultimate Edition on PS3 is $5. And, I'm sorry, it's $5.99. So that's $56 I spent. And Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater for PS Vita is $4. $3.74. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I'm it's not fucking around. For 60 bucks. 60 bucks, man? Come on. Come with of- it. You got Overwatch in there, so you get your multiplayer gaming. Got Overwatch, yeah. I got Castlevania. It's a game man. I don't. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Borderlands. You're good on the go. You're good at yeah. home for a single player. I got Metal Gear. I got Castlevania on the go at home. I got Borderlands, which I can play with my friends on PS3 if I need to. Of course, Overwatch on yeah, PS4. Your friends are gonna play with you on PS3. Where's, where's yeah, the they, fucking, they've all graduated. Uh, and Street Fighter Five. Street Fighter Five, man. <laughs> That's all I need. It fills yeah. every niche for me. That's I got fighting games. I got first person shooters. Except the fucking. There's no fucking in any of those games. Are you sure? It, ne- it never really factor? shows what Alucard I mean, does in, in just, Castlevania you, Symphony. It's not far, far far away from Overwatch, let's be clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're fucking oh, in Overwatch. Man, my man. It's still a porn you hub. You'll see some shit that'll blow your mind. Yeah, my yes. man. Saving the Overwatch mouse is mouse. definitely there. <laughs> Mouse, mouse, not a man. I think chat have um, <laughs> <laughs> sadly not a sponsor. Um, chat's come up with some great yeah, ideas. Some this was actually something chat. something that I was going to allude to. And uh, Inner Black Ninja there, um, Justin, has brought out a point that I was going to make here. And this was going to be my curveball once we'd all gone through it. Uh-huh. You could put that $60 in your pocket and have an amazing time all year on games anyway. So you've got Warframe, you've got yep. League of Legends, you've got Dota, you've got Fortnite. Paladins, you've got Fortnite, you've got, um, what's that MOBA, uh, Paragon. Yeah, it's a, a time in gaming when, realistically, if you oh, had geez. no money to spend, but you've got the platforms to play it on. Right, if you, you got a computer and an electricity, you could probably... Yeah, or even a, um, a, a PS4. Most of those games are an Xbox. That's Most true. of those games yeah. you can play there, with the exception let, of League. And Let me just say this real quick, Gary, to, to accent your comment. Uh, Nova and Nina got a PS4 for Christmas this year, uh, and I got them a special edition has a red side, so I want it to be unique. I bought them six games. They have 36 games on their console. Free to play, thir- isn't it? 30 free-to-play games on there. You know, I mean, it's kind of crazy. It was never like this for us growing up. If oh, we had yeah. this kind of reality back when we were kids, it would have been a wrap. Free-to-play free to play would have been the biggest thing in the world. I remember bringing world. home... I, well, that might be you. I remember getting the Xbox 360 um, launch, and I don't know if it was available at launch or like in the weeks after. But uh, what was that Capcom game where you? It was a third-person shooter on that snowy world. Lost Planet. Lost Planet. Yep. Yep. I yep, remember Lost playing Planet. that and being blown away. Like, oh my god, this is like a hour demo and it's free, and it really showed off the Xbox 360 at the time. Like, yeah. you know, it, the Xbox 360 had a rough launch. It was like came with a bunch of uh, PS2 and Xbox kind of up ports like Gun mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Perfect Dark was there, but it wasn't a great game. 
Lost Planet was actually one of the best looking things on that console, and it was a demo right at the beginning. Now you got games like Fortnite, like like the list that Gary just had that are free to play. Warframe, it's free. It could be your main game for years. You yeah. Know? Yep. Especially you know, now. I mean, it. it's so different now compared to how it was when it came out. It's ridiculous. I remember back yeah. in the day, the closest thing that we got to like a free to play game was those um, demo discs out of magazines. I remember yes. I got a uh, Twisted Metal demo back in the day, and it was one character, maybe two characters on one course. And dude, I played that fucking disc until it didn't work anymore. And I think and I had that same disc because game. I remember playing that same mm-hmm. thing, and it was amazing. I think you could even have a friend plug a controller in on that one too, you and did, you guys yeah. could do multiplayer, and you could just play the shit out of it until the game came out. So Split that was really screen, cool. Multiplayer. Mm. Oh man, that's oh, don't you look yeah, at my side, back, Briar. Briar. True story. True story <laughs> on this question. When I was seeding this as a as a thing for the show, I was talking to the fiance, and I said to her, "I'm thinking of thinking of this as a topic for the show. What what do you think?" And she was like, "You know, I don't really give a shit what you do. Stop talking to me." Which is, as, as she, <laughs> She kind of does every day, um, and then she said, "Look, I said, oh, no, honestly, I care. You know, um, tell me what what would you do then if I give you sixty dollars? What would you get?" Um, and her answer was, "And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you her answer. Then I'm gonna go back to the question that I had afterwards. Xenoblade Chronicles on the 3DS was her answer, um, okay. and a year subscription to Pornhub Premium. Now that was her genuine answer that she gave me." <laughs> No wonder you married her. Yeah. Yeah. Good pickup, man. Good pickup. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you put a ring on that. <laughs> yeah. you, was, you could share that subscription. Again, with, without missing a beat, I, I didn't question it at all. I just said, why the fuck did you buy Xenoblade? That was the answer. <laughs> it's like, that was it. Xenoblade Chronicles that's, that's on the 3DS. That's love, man. Whitney Houston song, for real. Isn't there a you new guys... Xenoblade for the Switch right now? I've got it, yeah. It's it um, they're both good. Uh, yeah, with j- jokes aside, Xenoblade Chronicles X and Two are, are all fucking great games. But it's just like that was what came to her mind: Xenoblade Chronicles 3DS and Pawn. Why the 3DS version? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like, there's a new one for Switch right now. I honestly think she was just fed up with me talking to her and wanted me to go away. <laughs> Did it work? I don't think it worked. So her answer was too interesting. If she wanted you to go away, she should have just said Mario. <laughs> <laughs> possibly possibly True. it's funny my mom called me the other day she was getting me and sam's christmas gift and uh she's like uh you guys said you wanted what What did you want one of those nintendos is what she got she's and then when i told her i was like oh, you know nintendo switch and she's like well hold on i'm at the store right now and she flags someone down and she's on the phone she's like i'm looking for the nintendo entertainment system <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like mom we just we just hand the phone over to the dude. So I, my mom's getting me and Sam a switch for Christmas. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's awesome. Again, not the way I thought that transition was going to go uh, after the Pornhub Get the pro premium membership. Wilson. Get it. <laughs> get that shit off of Amazon. <laughs> Genuinely <laughs> thought mom would come through with the, with uh, the, the membership code. <laughs> the the CDK. What do you want? Eh, just get me a gift to Pornhub. What's that? Eh, don't ask. I got you and you. <laughs> your mom just comes in. Like, I got you and Sam 12 months premium. Enjoy. <laughs> I use the same. My mother shares her HBO, her Showtime, and her Pornhub with me, so I get them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the only thing that now create profiles, so you can just log yeah, into that thing. profile. Oh, yeah. that's really <laughs> fun, is the, Lord you know, knows I don't want to see what my mother's been looking at. <laughs> recommended don't really care for what you. She's into. Yeah. More worried about what I'm into. That's a, that's a, that's a fucking thing. Your mum's because you watched section. Because you watched. <laughs> Watch. Other members of your family liked this, suggested by Pornhub. I'd be more concerned to see, I, you know, more power to my mom, whatever she wants to see. I'd be more concerned to see my wife's. <laughs> True what that. if she's looking for something that old Briar ain't providing anymore? <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. You can't hide it. You gotta. <laughs> I came back just in time. I've got to be honest, whatever my other half's looking at on there, I am pretty sure I can't provide. So, yeah, no matter which way now, let, let me ask you a question. This might be off, off I've the seen subject. It. They're obscene, obscene people on there, man. Like beer cans. Ridiculous. Why is there so much spinning? <laughs> what the fuck are you watching? It's very angry. A lot of choking, spitting, yeah. kicking. It's just, you know. 
No one's having a good time there. Well, uh, uh, Gary, Gary, you have to search for that shit, you know. It, it's, you can't just I go find... to Pornhub and see somebody getting choked. You gotta actually look for that shit. I find most of the time it's what pops up on my screen. That's why I have to reinstall my computer so frequently. <laughs> Ridiculous. Every day Gary Diaz has something wrong with this. Yeah. If, if my mouse and keyboard stop working. I don't know what's happening. It must be I know these the sites key... are going to. It's, the keys are very sticky at the moment. I don't know why. Anyway. I'm an example of why you don't you stream porn, you don't download it. Stream. Wow. Yeah. Just view it. There's no need to click that download button, Gary Diaz. Yeah. I know, but the quality's not there, is it? You you lose stuff in the pixelation, the upload, yeah. I want the raw stuff. Stuff I don't need to see, there. I think. <laughs> I'm tired of that video buffering on him at the, the crucial no, no, no. moment. I need, I need the director's commentary. No, no. I want director's no, commentary. No. I want subtitles. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I just want other languages. Same way the division works better in Japanese dub. You know, I think we could just put that on. Gary likes Michiko the outtake. Yata! This is <laughs> why he likes the division sound. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of your porn. <laughs> I, I, I like it. Better. Uh, yeah? shoot, shoot me now. Shoot me now. <laughs> Christmas video game wish to Pornhub, sharing Pornhub memberships with family. <laughs> that I wonder how that works because Netflix goes like six ways. Do you think that works on a Pornhub Premium? Well, I think so. I like, does Netflix anybody works... actually sign into that shit? Well, no. Check it out. Like how Netflix works. Oh, look you it sign up in and it asks who is who is this, and then you'd click your name, and then it would be like, okay, we remember all the things you're into, all the weird shit. So here's all your weird shit. That's but another thinking. sponsorship <laughs> opportunity here, guys. Um, <laughs> it has to work just like Netflix. yeah. Definitely. We may have just sold them like a billion dollar idea. Right? Possibly. <laughs> Family and friends sharing plan, Pornhub. Yeah. And they won't say shit about Revolver Live when they implement it. That is some bullshit. Uh, apparently it. it's uh, apparently it's not, but there is a subreddit called uh, slash r share a fap um, where there's a lot of accounts sharing that happens. That I've just I'll share a fap. <laughs> Thank Christmas God for all. Gary Diaz. Merry Christmas. Agadix.com, code Revolver Live. <laughs> code Revolver Live. We got one last topic for episode 21. Who wants to get into it? I really don't know whose topic this is. I think it's Wilson's. Revolver Survival. Sounds like a lot of fun. Willie. That's a good one, man. So, you know, I played a lot of survival games in my day, and uh -huh. it kind of got me thinking, you know, hypothetical situation here. Uh, my bus is broke down on tour, leaving the crew stranded in the wild. What role would each cast member play in helping the crew survive until, helps until help arrives? So we right. have to look at our group here. It doesn't matter where we're stranded. Let's just say it's not somewhere fucking cold. All right? Let's just okay. say that. Good. All right? So we're stranded in... pain in the ass in Division Survival Mode. <laughs> I'm saying, man. Uh, it's really bad. So let's... Look at our group here and and see what our strengths and weaknesses are, and let's see if we can get the fuck out of this mess. <clears throat> so, like right off the bat, Beastly has been killing a lot of squirrels lately. Right, right? he's gonna you know, feed he kill kill the one today. He's gonna provide it, not hide it. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> gonna go out there. He's gonna get that squirrel, it, maybe two or three, and he's gonna bring them back. Briar, and you've mentioned wait, this wait, before. Wait, 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 before we move on to okay. Briar. Is squirrel the extent of his hunting? Because what happens if there's no squirrels native to the habitat? I feel like if you can hunt, I'll kill whatever's out there, Gary. Exactly. I feel like if you could get a squirrel, you could get a fish. My You're scope need to is, get him a higher caliber rifle than the BB gun he's been using to kill the squirrels. But I think once we do, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, granted, God forbid. You know, if he has to catch a rabbit, Briar, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Briar, you're gonna be cannibalizing a rabbit because my gun will blow a fucking rabbit's head off, and I want you to be I'm offended. There, this and I mean, rabbit leg. Don't make me do this. Don't make me do this. And the uh, the good thing about BC, if he doesn't have a gun, he can just club him to death with his dick. So we can move on from this, <laughs> dude. The meat it, hammer is an effective it, hunting it, weapon. It works as like a stealth weapon as well because it might be a hundred yards out. I'll just lift it to the small. <laughs> It's like, a, sudden, it's like a frog's tongue and shoots out. Whap -a <laughs> Chameleon just grabs it. Doesn't even knock it out. It just grabs it and subdues it. Beasley, Wraps around his neck like a fucking Beasley. anaconda. He's got, he's, got, uh, he's got elephant nose style control of his member. <laughs> As true. one would. It's true. As okay, totally. so we've established basically strengths, hunting, weakness, pull out. But uh, Brian, you're going to talk about. Right. Well, he's also going to be great for 
for repopulating the, <laughs> the earth. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> we got there is gonna be. We're gonna we're gonna have thousands of fucking children within years. <laughs> and, every woman who gets pregnant by me immediately learns a cooking skill. So oh. if I got three, we got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, well, that's all the time. Is that like the world's best STD that you offer? <laughs> Yo, when I get done with you, girl, you're about to learn how to cook something real good. <laughs> Up until Kate had the the third child, her breakfast cooking was okay. As soon as Ellie popped out, she pulled out omelets and salsa and every. I was like, wow, I finally completed the Trinity. So you, know, yeah. you in in her defense, you have to get pretty damn good at cooking when the meat that is being provided to you is fucking squirrel. <laughs> Like you have to be, you got to get inventive real fucking fast. Well, you know, he could also have a side of toast with the yobo, the toaster. You know what I mean? So there's. Yeah, that's true. He'll yeah, bring, he brings the toaster everywhere he goes. He never leaves home without it. Look at that thing. Look at all that toast you could fit in there. Toast. Look at that. Uh, Briar, you had mentioned before in the past that um, you were going to, you wanted to be a uh, a park ranger. Yeah, yes. that's right. I went to school. One point in time. So I feel like your navigational skills, like the fact that you wanted to go into it, already tells me that you're comfortable with getting around in nature. I, and I, I am not the kind of guy who get lo gets lost. I, I get lost more now that I use a GPS than when I see some map. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not like fucking paying attention to where I'm going anymore. <laughs> he's our navigator. You okay. know what I mean? He's going to... Thank God I have a use. <laughs> and Fire <laughs> also used to play a hell of a lot of golf. So if my pellet gun ever gets jammed, he can take out a squirrel from a distance. Yep, it's true. Crack. I'm not that good at golf. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing I mean, like golf with friends. You might want to let me take the The tree shot. branches <laughs> around the squirrel are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm kind of, I'm thinking, you know, like, the strengths that I could bring, you know, are more like spiritual hippy-dippy side of being out there. You know what I mean? We might get naked. It might get a little psychedelic. But, you know, it's all in, it's all in good fun. I promise hey, you by the time. You gotta have fun in the apocalypse, too, man. <laughs> Wilson, we need somebody. To Wilson smoke. is the glue that binds. If we go fishing, we need somebody to be able to smoke the salmon, someone to smoke our meat so it lasts for a long time. I can see you in there. <laughs> All the meat smoke lasts for a year. I mean, you hang have on, your. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to raise my hand once more on this story. <laughs> go. We weren't in the apocalypse, right? As far as I'm aware, the bus has oh. broken down in the world. Why am I naked smoking fish? Like, where did this go wrong? We've burst hey, a tire. Harry, like, Harry. <laughs> Wilson is the glue that binds. It's all you need to know. Yes, <laughs> you listen to fucking advisor. Wilson. So oh, we man. were waiting for AAA, and we're now killing squirrels and naked smoking fish. It's Are you going to complain for this whole trip, Gary? I mean, we broke down. The bus broke down. Okay, we hit a roadblock. But now we got food. We got smoke. Yeah. We're naked. Everything's going okay, Gary. Why you gotta be bitching? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't sit in the guy's pickup who comes to pick you up naked. I think there's like no shirts, no shoes, no service in those things. I'm just we'll get dressed, we'll get dressed for that. But... <laughs> Man, could Christmas you imagine day. if uh, they've got a 45 minute call out time on them? In the time it takes from you to make the emergency call to them arrive, you're naked smoking fish in a campfire, like. <laughs> Which leads me to your role, Gary Diaz. I feel like you would have just called an Uber and said, fuck this and got out. <laughs> to be honest, I'd have offered a carpool, but if no one's putting in on it, then... No, you wouldn't have told us anything. By the time we were naked and getting... Where did Gary go? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gary, this is just going to be good. Keep smoking, Willie. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, just, I feel like it escalated quickly from like a you know a a, a broken battery or whatever. Yeah, so. This is Flat revolver tires. survival, not revolver stranded. There's a difference. <laughs> survival is needed on a car breaking down. Have you drove through like Roswell, New Mexico? Like if we broke down in the middle of like New Mexico, you'd be no. Fucked. But I've flown through. Mm. Yeah, he's flown through in 1947. <laughs> he flew through. Yep. I heard it was just a weather balloon. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I was probed near New Mexico once. At least that's what Alejandro told me. Were I don't you know. 21? <laughs> oh, I don't think you have to be 21 to be probed in Mexico. You only had to be 12. Is that what you're telling us? Mexico, oh, Mexico, not New Mexico. New Mexico has got far more legality than that. <laughs> so I feel like, I feel like we, we, we'd be doing pretty good if 
Yeah. Beastly was hunting and gathering. I literally killed a squirrel today. I swear to God, I did. No and joke. Briar did was telling it? us where to go. Yep. And I guess if Gary just wasn't in the picture, I'm scared. <laughs> <We're just laughs> <just done. laughs> Have you ever seen film Alive where that plane landed and it crashed like o- over the North Pole and they survived for like three months and they had to eat the dead? Yeah. Gary, he could, he could become useful if shit goes really bad. So I, I did just, like for some me. reason I read Apocalypse into here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with an answer here that's kind of geared toward the apocalypse. And that's fine. I mean, Beastly, you, you're clearly the hunter and gatherer. You are the provider, Beastly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna have to give you in return for that food, but I know <laughs> it ain't gonna feel good. <laughs> Ooh, <that's... laughs> now you know. I mean, that's what I was going to offer myself in. I'm not much of a hunter or a provider, but I feel like I could be the chieftain's concubine. Gary, you know, and just I already of... got a plan for you, and it's an important one. Go in the apocalypse, you know there's going to be bad men roaming around. Like, no, oh, for sure. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen the road? Like, it is a dangerous thing. The apocalypse. I have. But I in know all the Mad Max movies. If I got Gary Diaz in my group. We're going to get into some kind of trouble with some very he's bad people. Talk it, talk it out. We're going to send Gary out there, and we're he's going to come back laughing, giggling. They're all his best <laughs> friends, and he's got their shoes. <laughs> he, not only, he not only won them all over, but he got them to give us their shit when yeah. they came to take our shit. <laughs> and, and their money. That's a way brother. better, right? that's a way better I mean, solution than what know I was going to come like. up with. I like that story as well because I either have that resolution and that happens or they kill and eat me. So either way, you guys win. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> and we have enough space to escape. Thanks, Gary. They, they take care of a problem for you or you get their shoes. So They're walking around with sore feet, but they got this brand new Vita that they're pretty, pretty happy with. <laughs> Gave up all their supplies for it, but, you know, at least they can play the best of 2012. So. And the apocalypse future currency is is Vita's. So Gary's just rich. He's rich in Vita. Yeah, like <laughs> doorman in front of his house. Each one's holding like a Vita cartridge in their hand. I I, I think we'd do all right. I, I think no with those set of skills. <laughs> yeah, I, when when yeah. you said when you said you were going to send Gary out to the group of bad people for a second, yeah. I, I thought you were taking a wild turn. Like we were we were going to put a dress on him and send him out to the. No, I have to... 100. <laughs> in Gary's ability here. It wouldn't be a wild turn. Have you heard Gary's stories? That's Gary, what I'm saying. <laughs> Gary is going to return to us a victor of a negotiation Ghost that Ghost. all parties are happy with for a little while. Yeah, for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Until they figure sure. out the shenanigans that Gary just pulled on him. <laughs> They're going to be happy, too. They might be back in a day or two once they figure out that these Vitas can't hours. charge them because there's no fucking electricity in the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> but by then, we'll be fucking gone because we're smart. <laughs> we're getting the fuck out. <laughs> I'll take all of their squirrels on the way out, too, so we'll be good to go. <laughs> it, man, I feel like that the entire premise of Revolver is almost like a Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Like We've been building towards this apocalypse because the more I look at the overlay that we have, it kind of looks apocalyptic now. Mm, it does. It's you know, true. we've kind of got the the twin pistols on the the ravaged Mad Max looking Fallout landscape there in the background, and our heads on there. I mean, if it wasn't for the uh, the you know the background shattered or the illusion shattered by the the stilettos on a Christmas tree, I think we'd be all right. You know, it's the <laughs> it's the only thing that's letting the guys down. No, in all honesty, um, I I don't know what I do. Like I said, I think I'd offer myself out as a as a rent boy to the largest clan that were there. Um, and try to align myself to the power bottom, the, as a power bottom to the to the <laughs> chieftain, and then work oh, my way. Power bottom. That's <laughs> <laughs> how I move up here. in society. I'm the chieftain's power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I could see myself, you know, like Jeff Goldblum in Thor Ragnarok, where I'm in like finest robes and like <laughs> blue makeup, <laughs> lots of nice rings. That's a, that's a beautiful visual. That's, it. <laughs> that's good that's where i see my life that's it where the, the bus broken down has now led me into this well i feel i feel a little more comfortable for the revolver world tour like you I know we're, as we as the date approaches for the kickoff for the send-off of the revolver world tour uh, as we fuel the bus and kick the tires i do feel a little more more comfortable uh, and, and if and if look- anything were to happen we'd be we'd be okay let me just say, you know, I do have some baggage, five kids, you know, we can throw a couple of them out if you need to, but 
Kate also has a pellet gun and she shot two squirrels herself. So, well, at least every other day be eating really good. I make my own buffalo sauce, buffalo squirrel. Anybody? Gary, I love I buffalo they... squirrel. Oh, wait. Me too. <laughs> Gary's Gary's look of the combination of the words buffalo squirrel <laughs> after you said that, the look on Gary's face. <laughs> <sighs> You're not a, it, it's an American thing, Gary. No, it's not. Nobody eats squirrel. <laughs> it's squirrel. not a thing that happens. <laughs> I'm kind of uncomfortable with the fact that it's moved from a Thanksgiving tradition now to the primary meat sauce in your household. <laughs> yeah. There's been a slippery slope here that's happened. I do I appreciate like, the like, savings, like though. The yeah, savings. it's like a drug. I got home from look. I, I got home from work and I looked outside and I was like, "This motherfucker's just looking at me." Should we he do must Chinese not know. Got... tonight? Nah, that'd be Chinese? too expensive. We're trying to save money for Christmas. How about we I just mean... go fucking shoot a squirrel? <laughs> At what point do we have to send a PSA choice. out to the like residents of Atlanta to say to them, right, hide your cats, hide your small rodents, anything that he could potentially get there? He's moving no, look, up the look, food look, chain. Listen, I'm a, listen, I'm a black guy living in America in the South. Uh-huh. Before I even pull my pellet gun out, it's a, a 1.77 pellet rifle that's shaped like little arrow tips. I called the police. I live literally like two blocks from the police station. That's an easy death for a black man. So I called him. I said, listen, uh, I live right here on this street. I'm going to be shooting some pellets. I, I want to make sure everything's okay in the county for me to kill these Sorry. fucking squirrels. And he yeah. said, thank you for letting us know, sir. It's no problem at all. Are you guys I believe, eating them? I believe that them phone away? call. Wait, that he phone asked if there, you were eating them? So. Yeah, my neighbor eats them. Uh, this guy next door came to me and said, "Hey, man, I I saw you got two of them. Can I get one?" I said, "Sure." It's I'm becoming powerful in my hood, man. Apparently, Everybody the film Deliverance was based on Beasley's neighborhood. You know, it's it's, it's strange to think. My neighbor, my, my because... neighbor on the next next uh, on the other side, she told me in Louisiana, however she says it, she said in Louisiana that uh, they eat the squirrel brain. She asked me to. I said, "I'm not going to do that." She said, you, "Oh, that's your line. Brains? That's your line. It's like I'm Temple not, of Doom. Tell sorry, them all. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do it. I eat, I'm sorry. Okay, I've eaten one squirrel. I've eaten two squirrels in my life. I mean, the phone call that you made to the police. I believe that that the term for it is suicide by police. You see, if I was in the uh, <laughs> the control room there, and the the call started off with." Good evening, officers. I'm a black man with a weapon. I'm going to shoot some... Uh, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> officers, <laughs> sirens, everything. Jesus I Christ, must give them your address. it was a joke. Wait, are you telling me this guy <laughs> called, he pretended to be black, and he was going to hunt some squirrels and eat <laughs> them? <laughs> no, wait. He said he was going to hunt the squirrels, and I, I said, are you going to eat them? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! We've lost Skype. Skype stopped working. No! No! Skype, come back, Skype. Come on! But at any rate, I, I shot a squirrel. It climbed through the tree into my neighbor's yard. And fell in his yard. I was like, oh, this, I can't believe. Oh, that's, now his, I gotta... that's his squirrel now, right? I'm like, I, I got to <laughs> knock on this guy's door. So I went and knocked on his door. He came to the door. I said, hey, how you doing there, man? He said, pretty good. I said, I, I hate to bother you. This is a really strange request. Can I have my squirrel back? <laughs> yeah, can I have my squirrel? I shot it fair and square, man. It's mine. <laughs> it's like it. lost his ball over the fence. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hashtag BC lost his squirrel. Look. I... I I Fucking squirrel hell. squirrel in the tree. It scampered into your tree, and now it's laying at the foot of your tree. He said, oh, man, Brett, you don't have to ask. You guys, squirrel is so good. I eat them all the time. I said, really? He said, yeah, go down to Alabama. We go squirrel hunt. I said, all right. He said, well, how are you going to cook them? You going to stew them? I said, I don't know yet. He said, anytime you, anytime you shoot Christ. a squirrel, you can go back there. My dogs don't bite. Go on ahead. So I went and got the fucking squirrel. But yeah, I think what we need sp- to do is we need to prepare some and like dry ice it and send like a little sample platter, like a little squirrel lunchable over to uh, Gary. Please don't send me a dead squirrel in the post. <laughs> <laughs> Gary needs a squirrel. We'll, eat squirrels. We'll, we'll even like prepare it for you and like reseal no, it in the lunchable package and everything. I, I, I love well, you, brother, but the, when you start sending me dead rodents in the post, that's the line. That's the fucking I, line. I, 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 for the people watching, I'm not a down south crazy person. 
I, I'm uh, actually from up north. <laughs> Shut up, Brian. <laughs> I'm not, okay? I kind of got caught up. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I bought my gun, and there was a guy who took down a deer with the same gun I have, so I was like, this gun is amazing. And so I was just watching Wait, people. Wait, isn't it a pellet gun? It's a pellet gun. It shoots 1,000 yards a second. It's an air rifle. It's an air rifle. It's you can kill it. like. Was the deer, did the deer trip over and break its neck after it? What happened? He, he, shot, it he shot it directly in the, in the heart behind his leg. Shut up, Gary. He shot it in the in the heart, <laughs> did it run onto it? Did it run onto a freeway and get hit by a semi or something? It was laughing so hard it had a brain aneurysm. <laughs> did you just try to kill me with an air gun? <laughs> These air guns could fuck a person up, though, man. Like the, they would kill you. I don't know. They laughed before. They don't know. Some of the size of the bullets you could, you could. There's like. 50 cal projectiles that you could shoot a, out of those things. My, my gun is a pellet gun. It's an air rifle, but it's a brake barrel. You, It takes a lot of pressure. That's why I had to buy Kate a different type. It's too much pressure for her to do. And it'll shoot through my wall and it'll end up... I shot through my grill outside. I mean, both sides of the grill. It's a serious weapon. It's a real weapon. It's not like... Why you shoot in the grill? Shut. Test it. Test it the out. The squirrel was still alive. Was there, <laughs> yeah. a, a, was there a muff on it or something that you thought was appetizing? <laughs> Zipping around, he's just shooting everything. Did you see a small spider there that looked tasty as a fucking starter? Like, what is this? What are you eating? Jesus Christ. That's awesome, bro. It's it's expensive as a chicken breast in the United States. I mean, I've got no point of reference here. <laughs> We don't use squirrel a lot around here. As a matter of fact, whenever one of my kids' birthdays come around, they get to pick and choose what they want to eat for dinner, what kind of dessert. Kate, um, <laughs> Nina. Holy <laughs> 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 shit. So we're having Jesus steak. Christ. No what has the world become? It's, it's amazing. Oh, my God. Thanks, Obama, man. Done. <laughs> Holy oh. shit. That was amazing, Beastly. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> you Beastly. Uh, on the topic of housekeeping, um, I did announce last week there will be a giveaway um, for the best comment right. on iTunes or Podbean uh, on the upload. But unfortunately, being the detriment I am, I spent most of the week looking at animated pornography and not uploading my clip so it didn't go um live until thursday so as a token of goodwill because i love you all and i know that you have best intentions to enter our giveaway to win a free bag of dicks um you have an additional week to add your review or comment to our itunes or our podbean um all you got to do is put your comment up there we'll have a look through it before next week's show and between the hosts we'll decide who's going to be the winner we will announce you live on show and we will hit you up through dms um so please be looking out for that but you have one more week to win a bag of dicks from bag so enjoy fantastic we you love that on these things yeah. they are and yours delicious. Will, will not play for hours at a time yours second will best dick i've ever had it, it was <laughs> <laughs> you know Briar, let me just say this you know i've always strayed away from dicks and you know to me it was always a taboo until last week when i put that dick in my mouth it was it, it felt Better very than nice. You thought, wasn't it? Very tasty too. Yeah. I don't know what the, what the. I don't know if I'm gonna make a habit out of it, but. I, I'm in the same place. I don't know. I mean, I don't see anything wrong. All with I'm it saying now. is, I'm not gay, but twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Absolutely. You know. Hashtag <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Steve. Well, I mean, they're gonna remain our sponsor until Bag of Squirrels uh, are lined up. So. <laughs> oh my god. When Bag of Squirrels dot com hit me back Bag on the email. Squirrel. <laughs> Oh, squirrel skin, squirrels. squirrel <laughs> gizzards. Such a liver. fucked up image. I mean, it's odd that the distributor is coming from Atlanta, Georgia, which I don't know where it's from, but you know, someone out there shooting squirrels with a pellet gun, apparently. Have you seen my backyard, Gary? It's a All fucking right. wasteland. It sure is. It's huge. <laughs> Have you ever seen huge. the inside of the ship from Predator 2 with all the... The trophies of like the, the heads, the heads, like the alien head and the Civil War head. It's like Beastly's house, man. It's just squirrel heads, as squirrel far as you can everywhere. see. <laughs> you think they're pool cues until you get close and realize that they're. I mean, if you were a <laughs> true hunter like Predator, you'd match the uh, the weapon for that of your prey. So surely you should go out for a squirrel with your bare hands and teeth. They do kind of look it. like squirrel dicks. Chat said squirrel dicks, and you know what? They're sized appropriately. No, sure. they're not, Briar. I've actually skinned squirrels uh -huh. and squirrels. Oh, squirrel kicks are actually pretty big. I, I'm I'm not going to joke around here. 
I mean, I was actually pretty shocked. Can that be it, the title of the episode, please? Squirrel, <laughs> squirrel dicks are actually pretty big. They are I big. You've got it. I, I skinned the squirrel, and when I pulled all the skin off his lower half, oh, come on. two big, gigantic balls, and I was like, what is that? That can't be the penis. The penis is like half the length of the fucking animal. I was like, wow, this guy, I shouldn't have killed him. He's a huge cop. Suddenly, Maybe he was Beastly's just like the Ron claim Jeremy about squirrel. the size of his own dick are call- come into question. <laughs> 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 you may be onto something there. Also, we don't have an adequate sample size of squirrels. That could have been the wrong fucking Jeremy of squirrels. That could have been like fucking with a listen, member. Man, listen, let me just tell you. Nobody's, you know, when you take the size of his member to his body, it just, this guy was packing a punch. Just not more than twice. I said, he oh. might have literally been the like fucking. I, I, so bad, I, feel, I felt like he was going to put put a hurting on the female squirrel. Like, this guy, he shouldn't be dead right now. Damn it. We're going to need in, pictures in, beastly, and we're going to need a larger sample size than just one squirrel dick. Did you eat the dick and balls? <laughs> they got this. Well, I don't know if my wife ate them. <laughs> Who knows? Well, you can fry anything, okay? Where do we you go just, from there? <laughs> what? <laughs> Fried. Tune Everything. in next week to find out what small animal Beastly has been eating. Hashtag squirrel dick. I love you guys in the comments. Yeah, if in the uh, the, the comments, if you could suggest a uh, a suitable prey for Beastly to hit up, something that we think would be, you know, a step up from squirrel, but still within his means as a huntsman, uh, uh, well, we'll be interested to see how he gets on. We'll be doing a vlog. Beastly, would you do a vlog for us? Sure. A squirrel hunting vlog. I, I really would like to see that too, Beastly. I would like to see the hunting process and the, the preparation and cooking process. It's really easy. I mean, I have a huge yard. They don't hear me come out It's funny because it's very hard to imagine. (laughs) 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 Uh, I can can understand that. I've got to be honest with you. I could not fucking believe it when you sent us the first tweet of a skin squirrel. And you tagged Peter, the animal rights guy, in just for the fucking troll. (laughs) I can't believe you tagged Peter. He loves doing that. I've noticed that on Twitter. Fucking Beastly. He loves, like, he'll write a tweet about just about anything. And then, who would be most offended by this tweet? Mm -hmm. And then he tags that person. (laughs) He was embracing his inner Gary Diaz. He's going to have a little bit of Gary and Briar. But you see, it backfired there because the the person who was offended most didn't necessarily need to be Peter. Anyone that was tagged in that was (laughs) offended. Anybody who's ever eaten food was offended (laughs) by that. If you guys want to know what a skin squirrel looks like, just watch Hellraiser, the original film, before he gets his skin. It looks just like a squirrel. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm happy you guys enjoyed it. I'll try to vlog for you guys, and uh, I, I won't tag Peter in it this time. <laughs> I got to say, I want. think this is the best show we've ever done. <laughs> 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 I don't know, man, but I laughed this hard. I know that it was something special. I fucking appreciate you guys, man. This is a ton of fun to do every week. Land of the free, home of the fucking brave. (laughs) Other other than out squirrel hunting and other rodent hunting, where can they find you at, Beastly? Beastly Gamer YouTube channel or on uh, Twitter at Beastly underscore underscore two underscores gamer. And find me there and keep up with all my images. I want to shoot some fucking squirrels again and skin them and cook them. And send them to you with a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what about yourself, man? Mainly you can find me on Twitter just trolling and harassing. <laughs> um, it's Gary Diaz 86 underscore BT, um, which we're undecided. I think we settled on Beastly Twink was yep. the, uh, the, the Absolutely main what it is. We yep. have decided. Reason for that. Um, or you can find me trolling Briar's YouTube comment section or moderating the Podbean and iTunes. So... <laughs> Uh, or just you can pretty much for his personal information getter, like a, basically a Siri for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Uh, anywhere that I can crowdsource information, I will. Um, <laughs> best way to be. Finally, uh, last way to catch me or any of the hosts is revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We love getting emails from our viewers, and we haven't had many this week, and it's sad. So anything you want to send us, um, if you want to share a fap um, and you don't want to do it via Reddit, then please send us your usernames and passwords uh, for Pornhub Premium, and we will be most appreciated. (laughs) Uh, Real quick before we leave, I wanted to just go through some of the uh, suggestions by some of our viewers. 
Uh, they want me to eat a rabbit, a badger, or a beaver. I don't know if they're asking me to eat a squirrel dick, but that was that's a, bit a whole of an other window there, and they're telling you to eat beaver. I, I I would love to eat a rabbit. I never see him around these parts. I guess they've heard from the squirrels. Don't go over there. Can you do like uh, kind of a turducken thing with the beaver, the badger, badger, and the rabbit? We got foxes. Well, we got foxes. I, listen, yeah, we got foxes. I wouldn't oh, eat. I, foxes I, are cute. I wouldn't eat a badger. Squirrels are cute too. <laughs> mm, one can say they're, they're just a large rat. When, when they're fried, man, <laughs> they are so cute. And I eat a beaver at least twice a week, so that's out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'll see if I can find a rabbit, but beaver's old news. I've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> Where can they find you at, Briar? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Look up uh, Briar Rabbit on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at the Briar Rabbit. Streaming weekdays on Twitch. I try to stream some week weekends as well, but um, life gets in the way a little bit, usually on the weekends. Um, or you can find me on Pornhub. Premium, just look up Briar Rabbit. You can see all of the videos I've reviewed and curated for your viewing pleasure. Awesome! <laughs> it's the first time you, you won't find that on his PC Gamer endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you can find on PC Gamer. <laughs> he didn't plug his Pornhub contributions on the PC Gamer article. Forbes magazine. Forbes right. fucking magazine. Forbes fucking magazine. <laughs> well, if you guys want to shoot the shit with me on Twitter, you can find me at Ree Wilson. That's R-Y-U Wilson on Twitter. Uh, hit me up. Let me know what you think of the show. Or if you just want to tweet me and say hello and talk nonsense, that's the best place to do it. And if you guys yeah. need a friend, uh, Wilson is the best friend you'll ever have. I mean, the, the guys you've known for 10 or 20 years, oh. fuck them. Go on Twitter and, and holler at Ryan because yeah. uh, Mr. Wilson is the shit. One of the best guys I've ever known. And he Thanks, just. Man. So much positive energy. I love him, man. Love him to death. Just don't play golf with friends with me, apparently. Yes. Fuck him when you're playing. So toxic. (laughs) Just made me hate him. Just made me hate him again. And if uh, (laughs) anyone here is looking to play Destiny 2, just let us know the time and date so we can all queue up in the same time in orbit to actually get a match because we spent at least four days waiting for someone else to play the game to to play against the other day. So there must be someone, someone out there playing it. Well, for the people who don't want to play Destiny, check us out this Tuesday oh, that's right. between 5 and 6 for Revolver Plays. We'll be playing Fortnite on PS4. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. If we do 50v50, you guys can actually join us in the match and play. And as we said before, the game is totally free, so you don't have to buy anything. Download it now. Get in there. Get your feet wet. Play the game. See if you like it. See if you can learn some new strategies for yourself. And we'll see you guys at Revolver Plays Tuesday between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern. Let's get it. Bye, guys. Have a great night. See See you next week. everyone. Coach Revolver Live. We're still live. I want to be my own GIF. We're still live. I want it to be awkward. I'm waiting. (laughs) Just embrace it.